Hello, I'm Tom Terry. I'm the president of the Board of Ocean Pines Association, and I was elected to the board in 2010. Hello, I'm John McLaughlin. I'm vice president of the board, and I've been a member since 2008. I'm Pete Gomsack, and I was elected to the board in 2009, and I'm the treasurer of the organization, and uh, so I'm in my second year on the board. Hi, I'm Rick Handelman. I was appointed to the board by the gentleman on 2010. Hi, I'm Les Purcell. Uh, I'm the secretary of the board, uh, and I'm serving my fourth term as we speak. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens. I was re-elected re for my second term in 2010. And I'm Ray Unger. This is my second term on the board in Ocean Pines. Right. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Tom. Before we begin with the official agenda, I'd like to recommend we take a moment of silence for the victims of the uh, earthquake tsunami and our men and women in uniform and all the volunteers in harm's way right now. Let's take a moment. on Friday with a series of emails uh, that there is a discussion, Bob, going around about the, the Carrollton Lane. Yes. And I'm assuming that's what a lot of folks are here in public comment. What are you talking about? Well, that's, we'll get to that. That's <laughs> what? Uh, the, um, under the public comment, Bob, I think we might just want to work that Tom, is that, point. seriously, is that the reason why a lot of people is are here that, for that issue? Yeah, okay. That's why they're here. Okay. 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 Uh, mm -hmm. Just so the board knows, it's on the agenda um, as a old business item, because this has come up years ago for those that remembered it, and today uh, at the meeting is just for informational purposes. Uh, were, we have a... Um, Ms. Curley would like to ask me last month if she could speak to the board, but because of the uh, budget process we were midst in uh, and we had a long agenda, I asked her if she wouldn't mind postponing it until this month. She said fine. Uh, she has a request, but in fairness, uh, I added it so she could share her information. I have a whole packet of information here that I'm, I'm going through on the history and it's not my intent to ask the board to take any action today other than to hear the facts and then do, you know, take action next month, if, if any. Uh, but there are a lot of folks here that want to talk about the issue. Bob, did I hear yes, you sir. say there was emails going around? Uh, I, we received emails starting Thursday of last week. Were they going to the board of directors? No, no, no. no, 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 no. no. Hello. One would ask that unless, if they're of interest to the board, I, I would hope that we could get, share those. I mean, we I was out of town with a remote computer when I received them. They, I couldn't forward them on to the board at that point. I'll be happy to see to it that they're forwarded on. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, So is that going to be covered in public comments or, or not? Yeah. It, it, so if people wish to speak to it, right? Yeah, it, it's up to the, the group. If, uh, so we'll cover that topic when we get we'll to that. Call to order and then we'll, yeah, we'll go right, through it. Right. Uh, well, wait a minute. Question, point of order. Are they going to be allowed to speak to in public uh, during this discussion when we have it or they forfeiting their right to talk? I intend to have them speak now during the okay. public comment section. Yeah, that's, that's my, okay. that was my intent. Okay. Yeah. okay, I just want to make that. Okay. So uh, let's just move into that portion of the meeting in a uh, public comment. 
on this topic? Did we do the plan? I guess we did. Just as, a, right, just as a quick note, um, Ms. Curley is here and she had presented, uh, she had come in and spoken to me directly about a month and a half ago, correct? And um, just had some information and wanted to, to talk about uh, changing Carrollton Lane uh, to do the two ways from the beginning to the end and, and straight through for folks that live on, on in that whole area. Uh, and then following that discussion, uh, we, we de decided, as I said, to postpone it till this meeting. Uh, and with, with that being said, I had the opportunity to meet uh, Frank uh, Filippi, who is the Colonial Village uh, president. He came in on another matter, and I brought it to his attention, just uh, again, in all fact finding and trying to get information out to everybody. Uh, and I believe it was Frank who went back and spoke to his folks via email, uh, just so they knew what was going on. And Frank, correct? Right. And then, um, and that's where the emails start coming Thursday and Friday. But it, it's again, uh, there was no intent to have the board take action today. It was just to inform everybody because it's a, uh, you know, there's a lot of information that needs to come out, and you guys need to decide, you know, think about it. It's not something. You want to make the decision that quickly. Plus, I need to make copies of a lot of information here to share with you. So, if we're moving to that section, I'd like to, to ask uh, Ms. Curley to speak if that's all right. I may, if I may, this, it, while this may be the main topic and the only topic, this is public comment, so right. everybody can oh, yeah. talk anybody about can anything, talk about anything want to. Mm -hmm. Well, how would you like, as parliamentarian, to have, she actually has an item on here for a, an item on the budget for discussion? Yeah. So, would well, you like public comment first, and then have Miss Curley speak, or would you like her to do? I have no. I don't care. I just wanted to make it clear that this isn't the only topic. That public comment. I think we all understand public that. Public comment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. Okay. okay. Maybe. Some of our board members. Yeah. Okay. Welcome Morning. to our world. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Helen Curley. I live in Marina Village condos. Uh, here with me is Kay Niblett from Marina Village Townhouses, and our condo president Bill Shepard. I asked Bob Thompson if, now that I see we have a, a new board and a new general manager and you seem to be all progressive thinking people, it might be a good time to discuss this again. Um, let me go back a little bit in history. I wasn't here, I've only been here 11 years. So when they started selling the lots in uh, Colonial Village, I wasn't here. But I have been told that the builder the developer made certain promises to people about privacy and what have you in there, even though the plat in the county shows it to be a two-way street, and that's never been changed. So, uh, and back at that time, there was hardly anything there. So there wasn't any traffic to go down the street. But now, all this time later, almost 15 or so years later, um, there's a lot of traffic, people living all out in our little village out there, hundreds of people. And uh, we, we'd like to get out. <laughs> um, all the traffic has to go down Mumford's Landing Road in front of those townhouses where the road, in addition to being 10 feet more narrow than Carrollton Lane, also doesn't have the bike paths and walking paths that Carrollton Lane has. So those people were walking down there, just doing the road, no curb, no anything. And all the traffic is going down to them. And uh, the kids going over to the Mumford's pool, uh, all the traffic is passing them when they're crossing the street. And um, uh, you'll note the configuration upon entering is an in, in and out. So it was really designed to be that way. Um, oh, about eight or nine years ago, a group of us got together and <laughs> brought the issue up then, and we wound up having a meeting uh, before the um, county commissioners in Snow Hill. And oh, we had petition, we had, oh, people speak, we had about a hundred people or so from our group to come down, and then more from the Carrollton Lane group, the Clona Village group. Um, and I might note that Carrollton Lane is 
only a population of 17 houses, all of which are not full time. And as oh, we have Osprey Point, the Yacht Club, Yacht Club Pool, the um, Balfour Pool, Mumford's Landing, townhouses, two marinas, uh, Marina Village townhouses, Marina Village condos, Pines Point townhouses. So we've got a lot of people back in there, and it can become a hazard if uh, you need to uh, if you have a hurricane, everybody's got to get out quick or something like that, or uh, emergency vehicles getting in or out. And uh, we really don't see the reason to be like that. Um, it was two ways, and then one day, the developer, Mr. Burbridge, came and put his signs up. And so when we went to talk to the county, uh, they seemed to have a lot of trouble about whose responsibility it was. And they kicked it back and forth between a couple of lawyers. And uh, the question was asked by one of the county commissioners, well, if somebody gets a ticket going down that road, <coughs> is it legal? And the lawyer considered it, and he said, I don't know. And that's the way it's always been. I don't know. So, uh, you know, we see a lot of safety issues with it, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard so many of them. Uh, all we're asking is that the signs be removed. And uh, it's a freebie, won't cost anything to fix it. And um, uh, I have one more point I wanted to say. The signs be Oh, yeah, because, you know, okay, it's confusing to a lot of people that think it's two ways. But it's not, they think it's one way. But it's, see, I'm confused. It's a limited, it's <laughs> limited, limited access. Yeah. If you live within Colonial Village, it is two ways for you. So you can be coming in and not realize, thinking it's a one-way street, and here come cars coming at you because they have the right to. So I think that's a danger. Um, it's caused a lot of bad feelings, and that's not necessary. Why can't we all just get a low? <laughs> uh, but um, that's all we're asking is that it be fixed. I mean, it's not fair to treat one group of people one way and another group of people another way. I don't think we do that here. So I want to thank you for listening to me and. Uh, see if our president or Kay has anything they want to add. Have I forgotten anything? I think you about covered it. Uh, <laughs> the, the main thing is I've been here uh, 15 years now, and I can remember when it was a two-way. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I? Thank you. <laughs> Kay, did you have anything else? Stress us. Uh, essentially, uh, Helen has uh, taken care of it. I'm oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Could we have name names, names, and, 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 names and addresses? I'm, I'm sorry, just Bill, Sh Bill Shepard, yeah. Marina Village Condos. Thank you. And I'm Catherine Niblett, Vice President of Marina Village Townhomes. Um, at, on our trip to Snow Hill some eight years ago, um, as you say, they tossed it around and they finally came up with its Ocean Pines <laughs> problem. Um, you know, it doesn't surprise me that they're passing the buck, but I think the buck does stop here. Um, I think that we have, you know, we've researched it, we've had people out measuring the streets, and as Helen um, mentioned, that street is wider than Mumford's, and it's, it's all in perception, because whoever did the lines made that walking area or biking area, whatever you wish to call it, that side area, three times wider than it is any place else. And there just is no walking lane. I, I'm a walker. I walk Mumford's Landing, and I fear that someday I'm going to get creamed just, you know, the way people drive down there, and there's no place to go. So, you know, all in all, it is a dangerous thing that we don't have uh, the two-way access as other people do who live there. 
Um, I think that's, you know, that's just bizarre. We had written, um, I guess Marina Village had written to the developer, Balfour, and he sent back a nice letter stating, uh, essentially stating that they did it for the good of the colonial village because they wanted to keep it in a certain... Excuse me one second. Do we have a copy of that letter? I'm looking through. Um, I, I, How long ago was that letter? Please. Did you Did you give I me? I don't think I have. I was going to say I don't see that. In what, what year is it? Um, we contacted. Um, his name is Ray Smith for uh, Balfour. He lives up in Maine somewhere now. Uh, that was uh, 2000. Yes. Uh, we we want. Well, let me just mention. Um, he did say that we wanted the rest of Ocean Pines to continue to use Mumford's Landing Drive to get to the new amenities that we added, which means, you know, the Mumford's um, Landing. Um, and we put the signs up to reinforce the one way, so the people who were going, who were ignoring the one way sign would see it better. I, I, it says, do not enter, I guess, is, is the sign that he was referring to. Um, that was that was no more than, as I see it, and many other people saw it as a selling point to make. And if you're really talking about Colonial Village, it has lost some of its charm in the sense that all those homes are not colonial now. So I mean, if you really want to, you know, move it around, you can. Some of them are. You know, various uh, styles. I'd like to have a copy of that. Yeah, those okay. letters. Too. Okay, that's all. I just, you know, I hope that you, uh, as a board, will reconsider it. Um, I think it would be a. Well, as Bob said, we're gathering information exactly. today. Okay. Exactly. And name and address, please. And I have yeah. pictures if you want to see the pictures. Dave, Dave Kershaw, 893 Yacht Club Drive, mm -hmm. and I'm on the board of directors for Marina Village Townhomes Association. Um, my one of my main objectives is number one, it costs me an extra tank of gas every year. Uh, to go up Mumford's Road rather than going up Carrollton Lane. So if it costs me a tank of gas, it's probably costing every other resident there a tank of gas <coughs> a year. And at today's prices, that's not insignificant. Number two, Carrollton Lane is probably one of the widest, if not the widest, street in Ocean Pines. It measures 38 from edge of the pavement to the other edge of the pavement, 38 feet. And with the, whether they're travel uh, walking lanes or bicycle lanes, the width between those is 24 feet. So they've established a 24 foot width of travel lanes. This problem can be fixed just by manipulating that those travel lanes, just paint, painted lines on the road. If they adjust the painted lines on the road to run right into the uh, outcropping at the end of the road, and to the edge of the road after the last driveway, they can maintain that 24-foot uh, lane of travel. Uh, I can just pass these around so people know what they're uh, talking about. Do you want to ask something? No, I don't. Yeah, they. No. What is this? this is that you'd like to do. Are these multiple copies? No, they're different no. pictures. Okay. Yeah. Name and address. Yes, my name is Frank Phillippe. I live on Carroll Lane at 1230. I sent a, uh, an email to Tom Terry and to Bob Thompson this week, and I, I'd just like to summarize the point I made that because the rest of you have not uh, had an opportunity to see that. Um, as stated here, the original developer at Colonial Village, Balfour Real Estate, had sold lots on Carrollton uh, with his explicit statement that the entry on Carrollton Lane from Yacht Club would be restricted so as to preserve the Williamsburg style character of the neighborhood. If this is changed, that would be a breach of that promise made to us. Um, we already have significant traffic on Carrollton, and as, as the uh, lady here pointed out, that traffic would increase significantly if that were opened up at the end. Now, in the spring, there's numerous trucks that pull boat trailers up Carrollton um, to take the boats to the uh, marina at Pines Point. In the summer, that's the main entrance to uh, Mumford Landing Pool. Uh, 
if this was changed, we would have even more traffic because people would be returning with their boats uh, from the marina in the fall and, and during the summer, they would also be returning from the pool. Um, contrary to what's been said here, it's not just simply a matter of opening up some of the, uh, you know, changing the, the striping on a road. The road narrows to one lane at Yacht Club, um, Yacht Club Drive. So this would mean that there would be uh, some expense on the part of either uh, OPA or the county, I'm not sure who, to change the configuration of that intersection. Um, it would be at, those expenses would occur at a time when OPA faces uh, some other spending priorities. Uh, the issue, as pointed out here, has been discussed before at least once, if not twice, by the county. I think the same reasoning should apply. They've denied it. Uh, this issue has been considered and rejected before, and um, I don't see why anything should be changed now. Uh, further, we've got a real problem with lack of enforcement. There's, there's uh, first of all, a lack of uh, enforcement of that turn lane. I notice a couple familiar faces where I can see, you know, if I stand in my yard or sit in my kitchen window, that, that uh, no turn restriction is violated at least 25 to 50 times a day by folks. And I would like to see that actually enforced by the Ocean Pines PD. We've done a little study of our own, and it's, it's an extra three-tenths of a mile to go out to Mumford Landing, make a legal turn, and come down Mumford Landing Road, which is how it's uh, supposed to be, rather than just ignore uh, the signs that are there. There's not one but two signs that prevent, or are supposed to prevent the entry into um, Carrollton Lane. When I go to the Yacht Club, it would be a lot easier for me to just come down, make a turn on the Yacht Club, and then quick turn into my driveway. I don't do that because I want to be respectful of my neighbors and I want to obey the law. And the, and the rule is you go down home for landing and come back up, and that's what I, I do. There are kids that uh, walk along Carrollton Lane to go to school and ride their bikes. Um, it's sort of become a speedway. Um, and I would like to see things stay as they are. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm. Terry Gow, uh, Carrollton Lane. <clears throat> I've observed the same thing that Frank does. I take my trash cans out, I'll see people coming the other way, and I tend to stare at them. Of course, the students they ignore me because they know that they've broken the rules, if not laws. I don't know who's, who's in charge of that particular enforcement aspect. But the fact of the matter is that, that you're right, there was a covenant between the developer and builder and the people who bought those homes. Now, it seems to me with our society it seems to be uh, one of, well, why should you have something that I don't? Why should you have privacy on your road, semi-privacy, or semi-one way, and I don't? So you're willing to diminish the quality of life of your neighbors in Colonial Village to save yourself 30 seconds? Is that what this is about, 30 seconds? You want to change the character of our, of our neighborhood? That's not very neighborly. I think it takes so think it 30 seconds. Beg your pardon, madam. Beg your pardon. Um, uh, comments. <coughs> comments are aimed 30, this way, folks, not to each other. 30, 30 seconds a trip um, is what it amounts to. So think about that while you're petitioning. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Harvey Rosenberg, I uh, live in uh, Colonial Village. Um, <clears throat> I, I think the intent uh, from the very beginning of the road, because of the narrowing at both ends, was because the developers knew in the future that there would be such dense development on the terminus, you know, on one side. Um, they knew that, uh, knowing that, they wanted to protect the road from the beginning uh, of, of this building so that, you know, it's only 17 or 18 homes, but so that those few people would not be impacted by so many. And <clears throat> if, you if you look at fairness, well, you know, you could say that it's really unfair for these 18 or 20 homes 
to be impacted by hundreds um, in all, and, and Ms. Helen, you, you, you met the names of the developments that you mentioned really prove our point is that there's so much activity at one end, it would immediately become the preferred route, the, the quickest access to all of that traffic on that road. And you're saying, well, I, that's, that's really my point. My point is there's so much activity on the other side that once people know that they have the quickest, shortest, easiest access, they will always use uh, Carrollton. There is no other reason why they wouldn't. Um, so you're, and it's a side road. It's not a main road. It's not a. It's 25 miles per hour. It's a side road. You'll change. You'll 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 uh, overnight change the road from a controlled traffic road with ease, with one way access to the busiest, most trafficked side street in the Ocean Pines. And if anyone can prove me wrong, I'd like to see it. Uh, there's no other situation of any side road in Ocean Pines like that. The other point is, um, if if you do change the uh, make it two way, it, you'd have to control the traffic. You'll have to add stop signs. You'll have to widen uh, the terminus by by the by the uh, condos. You, um, you you may even have to add a stop sign from uh, from the Parkway Ocean Parkway to to the back. At, at Mercer's because there'll be there'll be traffic, increased traffic both ways. So you'll have to look left, you'll have to look right, um, and and there's and there'll be no speed traffic, speed control at all. So there'll be more traffic. Um, I don't know. I I don't. I feel bad for folks who <coughs> have to make that trip. I, again, I uh, Frank said it's an extra point three, you know, three tenths of a mile. And I did it this morning. That's exactly what it is. And I know it's a nuisance. And I know I can see the aggravation that it causes day in and day out doing that trip. But um, you'll change the nature of, the, of, of our neighborhood, which promises were made to. You'll change the, the traffic volume tenfold. And, um, and I think you'll break some promises that those folks uh, were, were made. To. So that's my point. Anybody else before I go back to second half? Okay. Oh, I'm busy. You has, um, I live in Marina Village, and I just want to say that it wasn't rejected by the county, as the gentleman stated. They didn't reject the request. They said it wasn't their, in their uh, jurisdiction that they turned it over to Ocean Pines. And the second thing is, if you look at the, the uh, line for the bike lane, seen that it was deliberately widened at the point where the stop the uh, one-way signs are it's wider than than the line on past the houses it just zooms out so it's an illusion that it's narrowed down there okay well, i'm sure we'll go out and measure it <laughs> when we're done okay. yes sir uh, hi, Ernie Ardis, 37 Quarter Staff Place. Just got a couple comments today. The first one is I hope we never have another meeting in this room. Uh, this room is so small that I really believe that the meetings are held here so people don't show up. Uh, that's my own opinion. I believe they're held here for the reason that some of these directors don't want to have people making comments that they don't like. It's ridiculous. And that's my feelings, okay? So hopefully the meetings are never ever held here again. Second comment is, for our indoor pool to get so filthy that it had to be acid washed down is a reflection that people are not doing their pro jobs properly. And that reflection falls right on the new general manager. He's not doing his job properly. The next comment is about <laughs> Director McLaughlin. His idea to be creative with people joining our amenities is really a good idea. You know, having amenities to be paid for quarterly, monthly, whatever creative way you can come up with. There are people that probably only want to play golf in the spring, or maybe only in the fall. So let them, let them have a three month membership. Charge them 15% more for those three months. Get that money into the association. Be creative. Mr. McLaughlin is right. The board members disagreed with him, so therefore his idea was canceled. But I agree with him 100%. Good idea. Hopefully you people will reconsider that. And also, last comment is, 
you know, in this year's current budget we're in, you spent $548,000 on that make-believe drain problem at the golf course, and you spent no money on maintaining our roads. I really believe our roads are far more important maintaining our infrastructure, as you claim you're raising our dues for, than spending money on this make-believe problem at the golf course that never, ever existed. That's all I have to say today. Thanks for my two minutes of fame. <laughs> hey, I, I just wanted to clarify a couple points to respond to. Uh, um, it was said that all the traffic would be coming down Carrollton Lane. I don't think that would be true because Osprey Point townhouses or condos, whatever they are, Mumford's Landing townhouses, the Yacht Club, the Yacht Club mm -hmm. Marina, all of that would continue to go down Mumford's Landing Road. The, the traffic that would come down Carrollton Lane would be from uh, Marina Village condos and townhouses and Pines Point and townhouses and little gray ones behind us. And the swimming pools. Uh, well, that's right. Um, but I could get way. Way. Well, she's talking. Right, well, well, I was talking. We're talking to everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> this room is so small. We don't want. Yeah. Um, and, and as the lady said here, you know, um, the county did not reject it. The county just said it's not our road. It's Ocean Pines Road. So it's up to you all to make the decision. And uh, the last thing I want to say is. You know, I'm told that the developer, in order to sell his lots, did make certain promises to people. I don't know, I wasn't there. But if he did, he didn't have the right to say that because the plaque in the county shows that it's a two-way street and it has never been changed. Okay. All right. Then, um, any other? Okay. Yeah, Tom, I don't think we, um, I don't recall that we approved the agenda. No. And I, I'm going to make a suggestion here um, that we cover the Carrollton Lane discussion item under old business now. I think around the room, a lot of these people are here for that specific purpose. And if we were able to deal with that now, they wouldn't have to hang around. Would that be okay? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, good idea. We just did it. Yeah. Free up space. Sounds well, good uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the gentleman, so if there are no more comments, public comments on this or anything else, maybe yeah. Bob, anything else you want to say? No, uh, I. No, uh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, we. I have many of the letters. There are public and, comments. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Got more? Yeah. In addition to the outcropping at the uh, end of Carrollton Lane, which yeah, I'm sorry, causes name and name, name Dave Kershaw, yeah. uh, Yacht Club Drive. Uh, the outcropping at the end of the road that caused this to be no left turn in the first place. The builder also directed the OPA to post a sign at, at the beginning of Carrollton Lane that directs people which direction to go for the yacht club, the pool, etc. The arrow from Marina Village also diverts traffic from Carrollton Lane onto Mumford's Road, which is not the shortest method of travel. I think we have a, uh, a good sense of at least the beginning of the gathering of information on this one. Um, Joe, go ahead. Joe Reynolds, 84 Worktown Road. It sounds to me like this is this boils down to two issues. One's legal and one's what people in the community want. Um, I don't believe the Board of Directors of Ocean Pines can make law, and our police can only enforce law. Right. And I believe if you check, if you want to make a speed limit or make a road one way, you need to get the county to declare the speed or the one-way street as a matter of law so it can be enforced. And without enforcement, anything you do is kind of useless, and that's why we're doing what we're doing here today. What I would suggest is that you get with OPA's attorney, find out what's needed to make the change at the county, and then ask the county Make, make the board should make a decision if it decides it wants it one way or two way or whatever go to the county and make that request for the change in the law and the county will hold a hearing on it and everybody involved can go down to the county and get it settled once and for all because whatever you do here it's not enforceable i know if somebody goes down here and gets a ticket what's the law they're enforcing so, 
you know, I, I just believe you, you need to sell the issue of law first. Well, the issue of what the board the wants to do first. To us. The <laughs> issue of what the board would like to have that be done down there first, and then ask the county for a change in the law if required to do whatever you decide to do, and then everybody <clears> will <throat> go down and discuss it with the county. Okay, we, we're going to. We're going to close up on this. Uh, Rick, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, I believe Mr. Reynolds is correct. Um, we are not the uh, body that, that made all the roads, um, made the laws the roads. So we're not the body who can finally say <clears throat> what, is, what is legal. <clears throat> so we need to go to the county and find out what they... Uh, um, what they say. Well, we I think we're still, it's a, it's a, no, 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 no. still in public comments. Yeah, we're in public comments. Yeah, we're not in a debate. I'm just mode. trying to wrap up this yeah. topic. Yeah. We're in public uh, comments. Well, I think maybe if you're, you know, wrap up this topic and see if anybody else has anything right. on another other, subject. Because we're, we're starting to recycle. Yeah, yeah. right. Yep, I, I agree. Are there other public Any comments, comments, I guess, is the question? I don't know if that's something that nobody is. Uh, I've been on the tip a couple times in the meeting. I had a setback. <laughs> I hate to ask this, but maybe oh, okay. it has to be. Sorry. And, uh, you know, the budget that you passed, and uh, I cannot say anything about it, but I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, we got a lot of money in the reserve, and, and I talked to Lee about it, and he said, well, Dutchie said, we need some money to fix this and this. But this generation, people here, we're paying for everything what goes on today. I have seen, I have lived in places where the city went to a bond system and they learned money. And with that reason, the people 10 years or 20 years from today, they're paying on the same thing, what has to be rebuilt. But we stuck with everything. You know, there is a lot went on here, and, and I've been here 20 years. Every time, every year when we had a new board, the biggest problem was the yacht club and the golf course. And it keep on going, it keep on going, and never everything is done. Now, I didn't know Bob here put the new proposal up. I hope that it works. But you cannot have us people paying for everything. I like to see you people and looking in, in the bond system. I'm not that smart, but I think that would help us people, even that we have to pay interest, but then everybody is paying on this system what we're trying to repair. Why it come everything fell apart in Ocean Park? All the money went to the yacht club and the golf course. Now I told <clears throat> P here, don't laugh P. <laughs> uh, we <clears throat> have 18 lots of 20, and P told me there's two lots we pay taxes on. I said to P, I said, why did you don't sell them lots? You know, any, any penny earned is a penny safe for us. P said we don't even can sell them. But four years ago, they told us they was gonna get $150,000 for the lots. <laughs> What is going on? The same thing we got the property and on the cross from the post office. They won three million dollars here. The guy sold 27 acres for four million. But we have to sell that. We need money. We cannot wait 10 years, 20 years from today. Sure, our houses are maybe two hundred, three, four hundred thousand dollars. But we live in today. We have to go with the system we live today. And you know, all the people are hurt. And it's not only that you, uh, I'm glad to pay the $35 more that don't bother me, but it cannot go, people. We have to think on the people what live today. We got a nice place, but we cannot do better than the Jones. That's the feeling I got, we want to do better than the Jones. If it was not for Marty, we were sitting with $6 million in a hole. We got a nice community hall now for a couple million, for a million and a half. That's nice. But we have to stop wasting our money. Too much is wasted in ocean pie. This is all I got to say, and I blame nobody from you both. On the other, don't pinpoint nobody, not Bob, nobody. But look what's in that bond system. I didn't know you people are smarter than I am. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Okay. For the record, I asked him if he wanted to make an offer on the lots, and he yeah, said no thanks. Yeah, that's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comment? Other comment? <coughs> okay, we will close that portion. Um, Bob, I'm going to move the, old, the Carrollton Lane discussion up.
what I'm going to ask you to do is basically what you've already started to do, which is basically gathering all the information, get it into the hands of each board member, uh, and then we will put together a game plan of how we want to address this issue. Uh, you know, and I think that's the best way to take, you know, before we start saying yes we do or don't have the authority to change or not change or whatever, we've got to find out, you know, I don't want to kick this thing down the road. Yeah, that's not my style. But if I don't have the authority to change it, I need to find that out first. But I need to also understand just what the game, you know, what, what, are, the, what are the parameters here of what our guidelines are. So I'm asking you to provide that along with Joe as to, uh, Joe Moore that is, not Joe Moore. Uh, okay. Tom, so we're on the agenda item that's a Carlton Lane discussion now? Yep. Okay. I didn't want to ask questions before during public comment. I do have one question that relates to that discussion I with the group here. There is a homeowners association representing the, the the homes in that area. Yes. Has this come up to a vote at your homeowners association? Which homeowners association? Well, I, 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 there are multiple homeowners associations <laughs> okay. in that area. How many? Frank, Three. Frank is responsible for well, the right. Moffitt Landing one. Right. right. Colonial Village. You've got Colonial, Colonial Village. Village. You got three. condos. You got. There's not an over. Three. Okay. Work. There are three separate and distinct organizations. Five. Six. Five. Six. Six. Seven. Five. Seven. Seven. Yes. Whatever yes. it is. We need a subcommittee to look into how many there are. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. But anyway, there are multiple. Okay, you've answered my question. I thought maybe there was. <clears throat> Never mind. No. no. So you don't have, you have this, this group may feel this way, that group feels this way, this group, and that's what you mentioned earlier about dissension and disagreement, right? So the bottom line Thank you. Line no more is, comments or questions. Repeat. Okay. So the I bottom got it. line is that nobody ever has designated that road to be one way or the other on any legal basis. Well, the developer. Except the, the developer did it. Yeah, yeah, the which he had the right to do. On whatever his thoughts were. Well, he has the right to do that. Anyway, we'll defer that to the next I thought year. you weren't going to comment anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. Uh, anyway, so we got to get to the bottom. If we're going to do anything, we have to get to the bottom. But what would the legal thing be? And how is that determined? Is that strictly an application to the county? I don't know. If, if I may jump in to help clarify. Please do. Uh, we, we do have letters, uh, and again, they're just not, I mean, here's, here's the research so far. <laughs> just so you know, it's not anything that's going to be an easy, I don't want to just copy everything and throw it at you. I'm trying to chronologically put it together so you can see the flow. But we do have opinions, and I say opinions from legal counsel, both at county level and Mr. Joe Moore. Um, so I, I would have all these to you gentlemen prior to next month's board meeting so you can review it um, before you decide anything. Uh, Bob, what yes, was sir? Joe Moore's, as he's our legal counsel, what was his position, his opinion? Uh, Joe Morris, and I have uh, a number of county documents here as well. I was slipping through, John, as we we're talking. Um, Joe had a letter dated September 4th. It's a, a two page. What year? What year? Oh, I'm sorry, September 4th, 2002. Uh, I'm going to just read the last two paragraphs. Mm. In conclusion, I believe that the present problem with Carrollton Lane was created by an agreement between the developer of Section 17 and the county without the input or advice of Ocean Pines Association, Inc. I sincerely believe that the problem continues to be a matter that the county, not the association, has an obligation to confront and resolve. Second, uh, second to last paragraph. Of additional concern to me is the clear fact that the owners of property at Colonial Village, by virtue of the decision made by the county commissioners in conjunction with the developer of their section, purchased their lots with the reasonable expectation of having the road remain one way unless it became a dangerous situation. Okay. That was from, you know, Mr. Moore. And again, I, I will chronologically put all these together so you, you gentlemen can yeah, follow so, the process. So basically, he said to the county, it's, it's your problem. Well, but I can show you others as I've read through this, where the county points to us and say, no, it's Ocean Pines. So there is a response that the county says. There's a very good reason. Correct. Very good reason so let me, let me gather, because right Let's now we're all going to take it. shots no. in the dark, but I will chronologically get everything together that I can find. And if any of you folks have additional information that I may not have, 
please drop it by my office in the next couple weeks and then I'll, I'll put chronologically you know what's occurred so you generally want to have better information the challenge I have is I'll be out of country doing our next board meeting uh, I think there's a couple of white elephants thrown on the table here number one because the developer the, makes their streets different sizes to sell their community, I don't think that should be held against any particular homeowners association. Mumford's Landing, which mm -hmm. was developed with very, very wide streets. Number two, there's more than one street entering into Carlton Lane because you have side streets coming off that. Okay? And I think you got to take that in consideration. The issue about emergency excess, egress, etc., uh, I don't think that's an issue because if you have a hurricane, we're going to close Route 90 anyway and only have one direction. So there's no reason why you can't egress from there. So I think what we have to look at, the real issue on the table is the inconvenience to the homeowners having to go around and the impact upon these folks, you know, because they bought. In terms of the curve for the bike lanes, having a, being a biker, if you take a curve fairly fast, you like it fairly wide, so you don't go out in the street. So I'm, I'm just saying there are some issues there that I think you've got to address. It's like, it, there's two things I tend to equate this to. It's when you buy a home close to an airport, knowing that you're going to have jets taken off in the morning, and then suddenly complaining about the noise and waking you up, number one. Number two when you buy close to a military installation, which I spent many years in, and people complaining about the troops leaving early in the morning to go on maneuvers and hearing the noise. We make decisions, and those decisions are to live where you live, and that street at the time you moved in there, you know, I believe was a one-way street. No. 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 Well, in some cases it was for some people who moved in there. And for these folks who bought, they bought under the emphasis that their neighborhood would, in fact, be a one-way street. It was a two-way street. That, that's all I'm going to say. I won't be here for the vote next year, <laughs> yeah. but I think you've got to take those things into consideration. It's not significantly different than the trees at the front entrance. We have to look at neighborhoods, and we have to protect the integrity of our neighborhoods. Right. I'll just, uh, I've been around for a long time with this, and this has been up in the air and discussed for 15 years that I know of. Two things I think we have to look at. Number one, what does a turnover agreement mm -hmm. say? Number two, if the developers who want to put the traffic control signs there, they are not enforceable because they have not been put there by the state or the county. Mm -hmm. So the traffic control signs could be removed by us with no trouble at all, and we wouldn't be in trouble with anybody. But you're right. I think we have to get uh, we have to get a little bit more information on it because we're going to be damned if we do or damned if we don't. Well, great. It just out. <clears throat> and by the way, public comment was closed, so I'm not trying to ignore people, but uh, I'll exception one thing. Go ahead. You may raise your hand about four uh, times. Yes, sir. I had my hand up a lot. Uh, Doug Swing on. I'm just an interested bystander here. It seems like it would be logical and helpful to the board and their deliberations, considerations, if they got an official input from each of the associations mm -hmm. and avoid having to deal with individuals. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Just whether well, it's three, five, or seven. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, my, my, my question on this is, again, I'm going to ask Bob to put everything in order. I had the same question you did, is, is who put the sign up to begin with under what authority? Uh, yeah. And if the plat says it's a two-lane road, interesting point. Uh, but let's get all the Tom, it sounds like a perfect uh, challenge for our general manager. It is a perfect challenge for our new general manager. I will raise your take on that sign, though. I'm going to take I'll it. I'll take it. Let's move on. Yeah, I got more. All right. Thank you. Uh, well, we finished the discussion. You can go. Yeah. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Can I have, uh, Mr. Terry, can I have this um, copied at some point and Teresa will have you. Okay, Teresa. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, the board. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
He brought food. I just ate a donut hole. Okay. Right. Did you touch any of the other ones? <laughs> All right, that was public comment. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted to inform the board uh, that we have uh, named. I have named a search committee to find folks to run for election the next election. Um, Dennis Hudson is chairing that committee. James Work, Sharon O'Hare, and Marlene Ott are serving on it with him. That's for the purposes of the minutes. So that you know that that has been put in place and there will be publishing advertisements to, uh, to the public for uh, seeking people to seek office to sit around this table. Want to make sure everybody is aware of that. Uh, and that we consent to it. Yeah. That's, that's sort of a mandatory thing. We've been there, done that before. And uh, I believe the rule was that that must be done with the, it's the consent of the board, just like you would name any person. What? The, the uh, committee? Personally, the committee? Yeah. yeah, okay. So, so what you're asking for is our consent to do that sure. trial without objection. Okay. Right. Don't need a motion? No, you don't need a motion. Without okay. objection. Without objection. Okay. Without objection. Okay. It's done. All right. Um, Got to reposition this approval of the agenda on this agenda because it's always in the wrong place. Okay, on to budget. Well, 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 approval, approval agenda is the next item. Okay. Just, Any just changes to the agenda? I, I do. I do. All right. I would like to submit. Uh, I had some information I received late yesterday afternoon, uh, IRS update that I'd like to um, request a closed session following this meeting. Just five, ten minutes just to give you gentlemen an update on that. Okay. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'm also changing the agenda. I'm removing nothing against Sharon, but Sharon's application to be on the Marine Committee it was not signed off on by the committee, chair. the committee chair nor the advisory chairman, so the paperwork doesn't wasn't done. Nothing against her personally, but we'll hold this. We have a we process this. and stick we with it. We got a process and it wasn't followed. The IRS update that you have on there for old business, is that going to be taken off the agenda based upon Bob's comments? Uh, oh, the IRS, yeah, basically he's moving it into the... Okay, so let's move to the closed session. Yeah. Okay. We yeah, gotta, we I gotta, guess I maybe have the same question. Is is there anything in the update that we can do publicly? Well, well my, basically, my, my update, to, well, when we get to that. When we get to it, yeah. We yeah. got something. You want to leave it on the agenda? Yeah. Okay, leave it on, leave the, it on the agenda. You can we'll leave it on the agenda. I'll cover it when we get there. Okay. Okay. Approval of minutes. Okay. <laughs> the um, this could take a while. No. Um, Should the um, <clears throat> one seventeen January. You want to do them in order? I'm doing them in order. Okay. Uh, the minutes that you have noted as January eighteenth, I believe, are the January seventeenth minutes. And vice versa. And the 17th or the 18th. Correct. Other than that, I don't have any other change, any changes. Right. So I move adoption of those two sets of minutes with a change in date. Second. Third. Aye. In favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. 119. Okay. 119. 119, Wednesday the 19th. Um, I have, um, on page one, the general manager's report cites a series of figures for Java Bay Cafe, um, and then it continues on the next page, um, Java Bay Cafe, labor, materials, equipment. There's no context. There's no lead-in sentence. The reader doesn't know what this is all about. I suggest we add a, a sentence as a lead-in to that to describe what that's all about. And uh, other than that, there are a couple typos on page two, but... Uh, and, and three, but with those changes, I would move adoption in a minute. What do you have a recommendation for the lead in so we can approve it? Um, okay, I may get up on the fly here. Um, the general manager uh, reviewed the status of the previously authorized modifications to the yacht club to accommodate 
Java Bay Cafe. He reported the capital expenditures as follows. Okay. Sounds good to me. Can we approve the? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And then you don't want to approve the typos, do you? Okay. Yeah, that's that's the language I wanted. Okay. So we can do that. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, with that, that, that's fine, John. Yeah, yeah, then we yeah, get it done, right? Yeah, we get good, it done. Good. Second. Okay. Hang on a second. I second the uh, approval of those minutes as modified. The moved and second. I mean, some folks just, you know, landed in their lap this morning. What do you mean, some folks just landed in their lap this morning? Yeah. I, I've moved and it's been second to approve the minutes. Okay. Well, discussion. No question. No question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next is what? 124? Mm-hmm. Okay. Move adoption. Second. All in favor? All right. Closed session we'll cover in the closed yeah. session. Okay. 220. Next one I have 216 regular. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I, um, I have changes that I would like to see incorporated in page three. And I've mentioned this both to the secretary and the president and the general manager. Uh, we haven't had time to type those up. Um, we did not, I don't suppose we got a draft of these prior to uh, the board packets. So um, there's some factual, and it has to do with that whole paragraph about, uh, it's basically my discussion. I went back in the videotape to confirm some of the changes that I think need to be made. And uh, I'd be happy to, to redo this paragraph. Uh, some factual things, but just some, the way the wording. But anyway, I would propose that we. Uh, Modify that paragraph uh, consistent with the conversations I've had with, um, as I say, the president and secretary and the general manager. I, and John, I don't. It's, no, 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 it's, no, it's, it's just cleaning it up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's nothing factually. Uh, there are two specific uh, factual things. About midway down, it says take in 558,000 5K. Uh, starts that sentence about two thirds of the way down. Mm -hmm. That should be 658K, not 558K. And then in that same sentence, it says at the end of April 30th, 2011, that should be April 30th, 2012. That's the budget we're dealing with, 2012, not 11. Um, and then there's some other, then last, for example, um, Les Purcell, Tom Terry, and Pete Gomsack approved the budget. Well, I think we did not approve the budget. We voted uh, to approve the budget, some stuff like that. Um, and I've got some other changes with your permission. Uh, I would uh, move plan. adoption of the minutes with um, those changes. Why don't you just, yeah, resubmit that. Resubmit it, I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Discussion? Now, there is one other thing, I believe no, it. The other, the other thing is we've got the attachment to these the motion that actually goes with the, the minutes from the 24th. Yeah, I have one change that, uh, one of the attachments is the motion that we approved right that uh, requires a, a change, I believe. Um, as you recall, I submitted the motion and then Dave Stevens um, suggested two modifications to two amendments to the motion, which I concurred with Dave, and then we voted on that amended uh, motion and uh, passed it. Uh, one of the two changes is reflected here, the other is not. Uh, the first one was to change the uh, designation for the funds to be public infrastructure instead of roads and Dave that's that's made um, in yeah, uh, see that uh, in the fifth line I believe so that change was made the other one was dealing with the approval process and it's been noted that uh, approval so in the third line uh, must be reviewed uh, as opposed to approved so approval was not that that should have been been stricken I believe from the emotion social review the motion as is, it was, as I remember, it was reviewed rather than approved. We make that change. That was the motion that was passed. Regardless of what we found out since then, this was the wording of the motion that was passed. Dave, because you had both those suggested changes, which I said fine, right? Okay. Okay. So with that modification. Um, Plus we attach the 224 numbers to the <laughs> right, amendment. Right. Uh, right. Second. 
Second. Second. Make your difference. All approved. I understand it. Thank you. Aye. Okay. So those are for 224. Special. Special. This is the one that I believe um, you know, this is Dave and I participated in by a conference right. call. All right. You just got to take the, the budget numbers off of these minutes and attach them to these. That staple was wrong, but that's all. Right. Motion to approve. So moved. Somebody was there. Should be. There. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, you second. Okay. Less a less motioned and okay. moved and then Rick seconded. Okay. Thank you. Aye. 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 <laughs> County commissioners report. I have a copy here. It was faxed over to us. And I, I went through it quickly just to point out a, a few things of interest. Obviously, you gentlemen may find other things, but uh, mosquito control, there is a reduction uh, from 45 to 23 uh, percent of cost, which will increase the cost to us uh, by $800. Uh, it, it, if this, uh, again, I'm going by the report, just pointing some things out. Last year, we paid our formula calculated the payment for mosquito control at eighteen thousand. Uh, this year, uh, it appears it has increased eighteen thousand eight hundred as our portion of mosquito control. Uh, the other uh, item of interest I saw in here was county surplus items to be auctioned off. That's on page two. They can be found on uh, govdeals.com, um, and it, there's a number of things. Uh, Roads Department, Health Department, Rec and Parks have surplus items and the county's aux auctioning them. So that may be of interest to some folks. And then page three, I noted um, uh, citizens emergency readiness training. Uh, these are classes that will be offered free of charge uh, of Worcester County Emergency Services Department. Uh, and they're gonna be held at the Southside Fire Station here in Ocean Pines, just point of interest. One question I had, and Judy sent an email around to us, I believe, had to do with the uh, solar energy. Mm -hmm. How does that impact, or do we know what impact it has in ocean pines and homeowners if they want to go that way? I, I don't, John. Well, I, I can tell you, John, as a member, as a liaison to the uh, Natural Assets, Environment and Natural Assets Committee, that um, only recently, at the, at the last meeting two weeks ago, was there a paper put out in that meeting on solar energy. But they have been studying it and working on that for some time. Along with geothermal energy, there's been a, a uh, rather extensive paper put out by Dave Blazer on that subject. Um, what happens to it next, they haven't decided. They're still trying to get some more information. So when it gets to us for some kind of action, you'll hear a lot more about it. So I mean, homeowners can, in fact, if they wanted to put solar energy on their roofs? Yeah, they can do it. They can do that now, right? Yeah, yeah. some have already. Yeah. And, yeah. There's several in the form. Um, so there's no objection to that. There are rules and regulations about all that. Uh, solar panels do weigh a lot. Yeah. So you have to be careful what you put on your roof. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the problems with sticking it on the indoor pool. It just, you can't put it on the roof. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but more energy on that, more information on that will come out. You'll also find uh, something we're just getting into. Um, we know it's been a problem, but we waited for the budget cycle to be finished. Uh, you'll hear a lot more information coming in the next weeks and probably months on uh, natural gas. Okay. All right. All right. General manager's report. Mm -hmm. All right. We're trying a different tack this month. <laughs> one page, one slide per page. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying. <laughs> I didn't pack my magnifying glass again. Well, I'm hoping this works. We're hoping this gives enough. Uh, I don't like the color. Yeah, I did them in black and white and actually grayscale to conserve uh, some money. Putting them in uh, color. 
Everybody have them? Mm -hmm. All right, let me run through the report with you this month. We're going to start with the numbers. Here's where our numbers are running. And uh, so far, uh, and Art and I were, were talking about, and again, you, as I say each month, you gentlemen have a much greater detail with the numbers in your packet, uh, the numbers you generated on, on the monthly report, uh, set is sent out to the uh, Finance Committee and a set given to you guys. Um, and it's available for anybody that wanted to look at, but these are, are how the numbers shake up. Um, we're actually still running ahead, which is good overall. Admin still in the red by uh, 79 budget over actual. Public Works, uh, you'll notice 44 to the red. Uh, the reason reason that one's up a little more is the, the plowing. You know, salt and plowing and snow, snow removal. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> the rest are doing uh, fairly well. Uh, the other one I wanted to point out was the golf operations. Uh, this, you know, there, there was a lot that was said about, you know, going with the Casper contract that was really going to put us upside down, you know, real deep. You'll notice, um, you know, 17 off, that's not as far off as we had anticipated. And, and I will tell you, things seem to start, they're starting to turn the corner a little bit down there. But the rounds booked, um, you know, number of activities going on. So I'm real pleased with that. Any questions about those? Uh, one one comment on yes. the uh, I'm sorry on the earlier thing you mentioned the uh, plowing the snow and all yes I believe at a previous meeting you quantified that or Art did or uh, in the neighborhood of thirty five thousand something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. uh, thirty five yeah. uh, forty in fact thirty five to forty is what you said I think yes okay yeah Thank so you. other than that we right you so know, yeah pretty absent close. that we would be ahead yes. okay all right cafe I just thought it. Can you hit one more light for me? Yeah. Please. Yeah, there you go. Just uh, the, the phase two, which was approved, uh, just for those that have not been there. I know several of you are out of town, so I just thought I'd give you some, some highlights here. Notice the black ceiling. That ceiling actually, for those that don't know, actually came down to here, this level, for this whole section. So that's all been uh, uh, removed, taken out, um, raised. The window treatments have been done. New paint's underway. That's along the bar side. See the blue on the on the <coughs> pole? That's where uh, you know the painters tape. It's not going to stay there for those who are concerned. Looks good. Looks good. Now you'll notice something here, just to bring your attention. The back wall. All right, the bars here. Kitchen's on that side. I'm actually standing on on the deck. The water's behind me. This back wall, we 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 actually uh, put some drywall in here, and that's where they're going to mount the TV because this whole bar shifts down to that wall. But those who you know have had some questions, what's going on? So I just wanted to give you guys some pictures so you know how it's progressing. Real pleased with everything. There's a, uh, a the view from the bar area. When think we finished? But. A uh, couple of, end of March is our target. So things are progressing. I just want to make sure you, you gentlemen knew exactly. Bob, did you increase the seating capacity? Uh, it will. When the bar shifts down, and, and John, that's a great question. That was the big emphasis here. This part of the bar, which protrudes out into the center of the room, that's the part that's actually going to come to this end. And this side had basically two uh, high top or round top tables for well, the folks that would stand on this end are the folks serving. They would just, you know, stand there to take stuff outside or inside. By bringing this to this end, it still has the indentation so they can walk up to still get the service, you know, to carry beverages out, but it picks up more seating capacity in the center. So, yes, that's the intent. Java Beach, remember we talked about uh, putting sand in outside uh, in the area that we just don't use at all? It's all been cleared, cleaned up. Uh, the, the cloth will be going down shortly. Uh, and then beach sand will be put in there. And then we're going to have picnic tables put in. Excited about that. Uh, again, they, this is something that, that internally we've done ourselves with Public Works. It's cleaned up. Uh, once the sand goes in and we put picnic tables, we'll be able to serve out there and, and extend you know, more seats for, for dining. 
really boxing in those power boxes and all that in some way? Or? You know, I, we're thinking we'll leave them. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. it looks really nice. Yeah. A couple, no, there are actually a couple of things uh, that we're looking at uh, potentially planting the flower, the um, the roses that, that are, are growing in a couple other areas that have, uh, you know, they like the salt water. And um, talking to public works, maybe put a screen Hide and some, some, some right? yeah. yeah, there'll be something there to cover it. But yeah, the roses is what has come up. Remove the dish. Yes. Okay. Latest thing at the at the yacht club. This is not its permanent position. Uh, we were looking at a signature um, dessert, and we, we've been um, getting desserts from the local bakery in Berlin, and that's going well for pies and cakes and such. Uh, instead of ice cream, we, we uh, decided we're going to go with gelato. Those who aren't familiar with gelato, uh, <laughs> as I've talked to uh, a couple of you about it, uh, big hit if you haven't tasted it. It's, it's uh, much more dense, much more um, creamier than ice cream. And I, I put it down the side of all the different flavors, uh, you know, give you some examples. They're, they're, it's unbelievable the amount of flavors and the richness of, of the product. So we're real excited about that. That sign on that uh, gelato thing was donated by an employee on her own time. <laughs> I appreciate you pointing that out. <laughs> well, Bob, Bob, is the calorie count on gelato a scare? Uh, no, actually, interesting. Yeah, I know it's not public comment, but the interesting part about gelato, which I think is, is, is a good point, the butter fat count is much lower. So, so actually, more athletes eat gelato than they do ice cream. It's a healthier of the two desserts. So it's an interesting fact. I didn't know when we were looking at it, but it's pretty exciting to think something's a little creamier and tastes better. By the way, the quickest way to get rid of a temptation is to give in to it. <laughs> That's why I eat ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the little bit? Okay. So we're excited about that. Okay, aquatics. I, I know something was mentioned earlier today where, during well, public comments. I'm actually very pleased with the pool uh, situation. This was the quickest we've ever taken it down, cleaned it, and brought it back up. Traditionally, we do it once a year. Okay, we do it at, at our facilities, but the indoor pool we do at least once a year. Uh, and if you recall, it was during the August time, end of August time frame because we still had the other pools open. Despite what was said earlier, the reason the chloramides were building, we have a lot more use of the pool. And I'll show you some of the stats. So our team actually did a good job. They were tracking it for, for over a week. Uh, we track it daily, but over a week, the chloramides were building up. Let me explain what that is so you all know the facts and not just, oh my God, it's, it's dirty. No, well, chloramides are, are generated when they shock the pool from the chlorine. Okay, and please understand I'm not a chemist. I learned this through the process. But they shock the pool uh, to keep bacteria, to keep, all, uh, keep everything bad down, kills anything, so it's safe to swim. Well, the more you shock it, the more it builds up. Okay, the chloramides build up. Okay, and, you, and they don't disappear. Ways to get rid of chloramides, uh, direct sunlight and high ventilation. Well, all the indoor pools in Worcester County, or anywhere actually, but you know, checking the records, this impacts a lot of folks. It's just the lack of, when you're not using it much, you don't have the build up as much. Now the muriatic acid to clean the pool, we did in August. The scheduled maintenance was once a year. Well now we're realizing because of our efforts increasing the actual use, we're gonna have to do it more frequently. That's all. So it, it's actually a good thing. In fact, our guys were tracking it and going, look, we are having this build up. We elected to take it down. It wasn't you know, the popular decision at the time because folks were like, wait a minute, we have things planned. We just didn't realize the success of the use was gonna create this so quickly for us. So I'm, I'm pleased at the result. You mean you're doing uh, a job? 20. I, I would argue the other side and say yes. The guys were very, very good at doing it, and it took us 48 hours. Typically, it's five days to take the pool down, clean it, and bring it back up. They did it in two, worked pretty much straight through the night. Yes, I have two hands. Yes, sir. On the slide you're showing, yes, sir. this is five days for 2,800. Uh, I wanted to point out the difference. January, we had, you see the trend. December was up from November. You, you don't have the November right. numbers, but yeah. January was up. February, we had five last days. Oh, okay. I and we still were at 2,800 visits. 
So our number is still up. Five less days to two. Per day, the fewer exactly days. Per yeah. day, yeah. Yeah, the fewer days in January or in February versus January, just by calendar. Of course. And then two, two days we were down. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to understand what you said. Um, the number of people in the pool. Mm -hmm. How does that? Uh, Acerbate the problem. I, I yeah, no, great question. I didn't know either. I, I had to find this out. Basically, all of us, you know, we use shaving gel and, and soaps and lotions, anything that we're using on our body. When you get into the water, uh, and cool. especially yeah. shampoos and stuff, the more you it, it, it then gets into the water. Well, that, that, whatever it is, the lotion, the hair gel, whatever it may be, is there. The chlorine attacks that to make sure there's no live agents, nothing that's, that's bad for you. Well, the way to, to I say attack, I mean, that's the best way. It actually sure. connects to it and kills it, so it's safe to be in the water. Well, because we have more people in the water, we actually test for this. And as we're testing for it, uh, we, we notice that levels start to increase, we re-shock it. Well, shocking is nothing more than an overdose of chlorine. You know, you're just adding more than you usually would. Well, what does that do? The converse effect is it builds up the chlorine, the chloramines. So that's how it exasperates it. Just more people in the pool creates the the the, the chemical or the bacteria which needs to have be hit with chlorine. Yeah, that's interesting because we don't have this problem now, but it's a small, smaller population. But another thing, I'm thinking of the park. Mm -hmm. you know, and you use normally bromide. I would hear, hear this bromide. before. After I thought you were talking about at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the park, you use bromide. bromide. We have a very little problem with that one. Um, the uh, new pool? Yeah. yeah. Well, good. And, and the reason why? You have a schedule with consistent use. Yeah. Our, our consistent use has spiked. Our use is way up now. So what, our practice of doing it once a year was acceptable. We never had this issue. Now that we have more people using the pool on a more frequent basis, i.e. extended hours and more programming, more people in the pool means we have to be more proactive with our this, maintenance. This isn't a suggestion, Bob. No, there's fire another, away. There's a, it's not a suggestion, but, oh. but there's another uh, reason for the park, too, because in, I, I don't know how I don't go there into the park pool, so it doesn't. Gotcha. But, but there is, I believe, a, a policy that asks requesting that people shower before they go in the pool. And, and that's actually a great point. That has been discussed. Um, the um, Aquatics Advisory Committee has talked about that. Um, you know, I'll go based on whatever their recommendation is. They have encouraged people to do so, and, and folks just haven't um, haven't followed the encouragement. So we. You know, is it potentially that we have to make a policy? And that's a great mm -hmm. point. That may be something we have to do. Um, I talked to Tom Perry about it, our aquatics director, and that's something, you know, that's one of those things, to your point, maybe something we have to require so we, you know, keeps the maintenance down. Well, you know what? I do have a suggestion, though, because, sure. you know, I, although I'm not in the pool, pool person, I mean, I was involved with the park pool for a long time. And we, but I, but this is the first time I've heard this. Okay, so this is good. But I'm just, I would would suggest that if you haven't already done so, that that you explain this to the to the people, not the aquatics committee, but you know, in some way to the people who are pool users, the members, and so forth, and explain what it does to the costs, you know, or how it can benefit the cost. Sure. And so, that's uh, good. Just, you know, I. I Maybe more people would cooperate if they knew why they were doing it. That's a great point. A friend of mine who is uh, quite intimate with the pool tech company, we were discussing that informally one day. Taking a shower certainly is beneficial, but it still does not knock off all those things that you're talking about as the chlorine will. You can take a shower and you'll still have hair oil. Etc. and some other things gotcha. that come out in that chlorine water. The other thing, just so you gentlemen know that we are looking at, uh, and it has been brought up, but we're, we're, I've asked the Aquatics Committee to, to look into it for us, is a finishing agent using ultraviolet light. Uh, it's it's uh, a way, and more and more pools uh, across the country are going to this. Uh, what's interesting, a uh, gentleman brought it to my attention uh, you know, when, when we had this, the pool go down, brought it up, it's something that apparently has been discussed many times, 
But as I did a little bit of research on it, I found examples right here in our backyard. The wastewater treatment plant uses ultraviolet light at a different capacity, obviously, because they're moving, you know, thousands of gallons an hour versus what we would be doing. But they use it as a finishing agent. And many, there are actually um, states in the across the country that are now requiring it as a finishing agent. Maryland has not yet. Uh, but we're looking at what those costs may be. And basically what it is, you still run through your same pump system, your filtration system, you still use chlorine, but you use chlorine at a much lower level because as the water, before it flows back to the pool, it passes through the ultraviolet light, which then sterilizes any anything else that goes through and keeps the water cleaner and um, um, fewer chemicals needed to keep it uh, bacteria free and chemical free and those type of things. So we're looking at it and we'll do a cost analysis, but I've asked the advisory committee if they if they wouldn't take that and go a step further with it. Uh, I did that through uh, Tom Perry, our aquatics director, and I spoke with Miss Jenny as well. <coughs> okay, so we are looking at, you know, other options. Okay, public works. Um, I, I always highlight, you know, things are doing, but there were so many going on right now, I just kind of blast them all off. Uh, they're working on Java Bay, Java Beach, uh, you know, the health inspectors out looking at everything we're doing, they were good. The gelato, uh, putting the machine in. Uh, bulkhead replacements, uh, just about finished. They've done a very, very good job. You know, and, and our guys don't replace the bulkhead, but they'll finish the, the grassing, you know, backfill and grass area, they'll support that. Um, uh, RFP's out for a bag drop at the golf course, uh, right there in the roundabout for those of you that golf. Uh, we, we don't have a, a large enough covered bag drop area. Uh, that was one of the things that were requested and the, the RFP's been out for that. It should, uh, the request is to match the existing new structures that were put out there. The go a great example of the, uh, where the golf um, driving range is, the building that was just put in. Match that, same color scheme, hip roof. Uh, street signs uh, for the, oh, the. Uh, Just to clarify, that RFP is going to come here well, once we get the pricing, and this is a. Maybe, no, it's, probably, probably depends probably on the, the price. Threshold. It's not going to meet the threshold. It's going to be a small amount, probably, yeah. Tom. Yeah. And it is already in the district. Yes, sir. Budget. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, no, no. <coughs> throw it out there. I'd rather cover it. Yeah, that's good. 15,000 is the limit. Yeah, and it, I, we don't think it's going to be anywhere near that. So don't quote me. I'll wait till we get it in. But um, uh, Swimmer Rack and walk, Swimmer Racket Club walkway, we talked about before. Nothing's done. We're just laying out a plan for, for a walk around that complex. Street signs are being replaced. You should see those. We That was actively, uh, you know, we had a crew out there putting them up. It is a requirement. But as they were, Oh, one of the downfalls were, as I mentioned last month, the freezing and then the thawing and the freeze, the signs were starting to tilt a little bit. Those guys are spending a lot of time and energy to put them up straight and have to go back. So they delayed the project, they're back on it now. The other thing that's really interesting with that too, which is a positive, we're using our cardiograph system and a GPS to mark where each and every sign when they place it. So we'll always know the marking of the signs. We'll be able to locate them. If there's ever a disaster, we know where to put things back. If something's torn down, we know right where it was placed. It just helps us track the use of it and, and ongoing activities. Uh, dog, uh, there, uh, Public Works is gathering dog park specs, and that's one of the things on our agenda I want to talk to you gentlemen about. Uh, the park drainage uh, appears to be functioning. That new um, ditch there, I don't know if you've been by, I've been by the last few days when we've had the rains. Water is coming out of there. Now, will it completely you know, change the complexity of what's happening back there? Probably not because it's designed to ebb and flow with water, but this certainly offers some relief. I had another uh, session with uh, our friend Mick Hall down there the other day on that subject. And? He's very happy about that ditch. He says good. It's, it's, it's good. It seems to be working. They were holding their breath, but it seems to be working. Yeah. Hmm. However, there are other problems there. For instance, that pond behind the Novos is classified by the county as a dry, dry um, wetland, ditch, a dry lake, whatever you want to call it. Then. Right. Which means it's designed to uh, catch the water, but when it's dry weather, it drops down to about a five foot level, mm -hmm. except that that pond never drops. And the water just fills it up and runs off. 
It, it's so that's based that's on the water. Else, that's based on the water table. Um, I, 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 we've had a lot of discussion about that, and I believe Mr. Hall has even put. Um, uh, and it's either him or, or the other gentleman that's worked with him, actual um, well spots to yes. measure to watch the water table. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I think he's finding that it's matching the water table. You know, if the water table's up, that pond's not going to drain. I mean, it just, it's not going to happen. The water table's going to be down low enough, long enough for it to drain off, so. The only place for that pond to drain is in the, through the roadway and, and into the Woods. Actually not. Uh, phase two of that plan down there is to take the water on the ditch before it ever crosses the road and bend it back around at a Manklin Creek ditch. And it's not a, it's not an expensive thing to do. I wouldn't. Not think expensive so. or inexpensive. Who's, who's paying? Not expensive. This is Aaron. We can talk about this offline. I know. But 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 whose phase two is this, and when when did it occur? It's not a, an official project at all. It's just something that would. It's another option. Yeah, I mean, this this was something that was evident right from the very beginning. But it was also evident that the county uh, would not agree to it. There's a lot more information. Available. You guys going to talk about it? And later? I'll get it for you. Uh, okay, I'll talk to it. Okay. We want to know when that guy's going to get that nail in there. <laughs> Thank you. I was concerned about that. At least the clock stopped. <laughs> but he's working. He's steady working. No, 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 no. He's pounding, but he ain't working. That nail hasn't moved. <laughs> to me, uh, they were trying to hammer a nail into oak. The doors at the community hall have been ordered, the ones that we had talked about putting in. You guys are uh, on this end. So, and when I say this end, just so you know, it's the big room on, on this far side that we should have had doors there, and they weren't. We've ordered them. They'll be put in shortly as soon as they get in. Uh, Somerset Park Irrigation uh, has been uh, fixed. Ball fields at Manklin Creek and Country Club stairs are all, uh, they've been permitted to prove just this weather pattern last two weeks, the days that they were set up to do it. And the reason we didn't jump on it, like the permit's done, the streamers are all cut, those stairs on the Country Club wall, they're not being done for the convenience of just having them done. I've said it before, but just so everyone understands, we have a water leak that comes in where that the, those stairs attach to the facility. The only way to fix that, tear the stairways off, take the siding off, and replace what's there, resheathe it. Um, so that's what they're going to do. They need to know they're going to have three or four clear days because once they start tearing that off, we're, we're further exposed. But that that's on. <laughs> Now, Bob, yes, sir. I don't see my south entrance on this list of where the they, because they're not presently working on it. The okay. the materials have been ordered uh, to replace the, the the split rail fence that's falling apart down the south end. Uh, all the material has been ordered, and uh, as now that the weather's changing, okay. uh, we're able to get in and do it. Okay. Remember, we talked about that project had to be moved off because it was just too cold to be replaced. You know, driving them in the ground for fear there was going to be a a tilt. Now, uh, ball fields, uh, they were scheduled to have some work done. Uh, the guys have been working on it. I thought I'd share the pictures that those haven't been down there. Here's what the new ball fields look like. I mean, they actually uh, have got several pictures, but the, the, you see up top, they're putting in, uh, they put in the new dugouts, at least the, the brickwork, because the other ones were, were in, in great disrepair. They took off the top couple layers of, of uh, a couple inches or so of, of dirt, which was causing uh, um, it to be just, it, they redid this field. Take a look at some of the picks. Now, from this side, it's, it's, it looks very plain Jane. From, this, from the outside, they have the one side facing for the, for the block. They're gonna just make it a much nicer, more attractive. It's still center, it's just uh, the notched block on the outside. Yes, it is all replacement reserve. <laughs> it was all scheduled to come to be done. Just, I just want to show you what's happening. Yes. <laughs> okay. Real pleased about. It. I mean, they, they fixed the heads. They have. We've had an irrigation system out there for a year. It, it's partially worked. This is one of the advantages when we kept. Uh, we made the decision uh, to move one employee from golf, who understood irrigation and drain and the whole nine yards, over to uh, public works. We had a lot of areas like this that just weren't functioning well. He's jumped in. I mean, 
getting these things fixed the way they, sh they should have been, they're going to be easier to maintain, and the quality of the product is so much superior. So, real pleased with that. Well, how many fields do we have over there? One. One field? Mm -hmm. Lots of quartz. Been there for years. Yep. Okay, so we're pleased. That, that's really, really going to be a nice, nice field when we get done. The other side, not just for use from our folks, we get calls a lot from, from uh, folks that want to come and do many tournaments and, and have that, those type of activities, uh, whether it's Little League Baseball type of tournament. I say Little League because Major League Baseball, they hit our building too much. And then um, uh, the softball. You know, having a, the field is going to be a nice, now that it's in better condition, we think we're going to be able to not only utilize it for ourselves, but it, it also increases the potential for renting out for a weekend tournament. How many do we have other fields? Ocean Pines. We do, but this is the complex here. Well, the other ones, they have the. Uh, it, there are other things you got to worry about: parking, um, water, those type of things. Information technologies. Just give you guys an update. You know, we've been talking about going to a one-card type of system, not only for ID, but to use it swipe when you go into our different facilities. Uh, I talked last month, we visited uh, Columbia Association, looked at how they do it, how they use their prox card. Uh, we also talked to UMES, uh, went down to see those folks. They have a Hawk card, which was very, very interesting. Same theory, but we thought we'd talk to them about how they utilize it, how they maintain it. It took them 15 years to get to this, but they have a multifunction card that serves um, as their card for everything they do. And, w and what we thought was very, very interesting, not only is it used on the campus, you know, for, for access, as well as charging at the dining facility. Uh, you could do it at the library. The other thing is, outside businesses are using it. And again, we talked about getting a one card that we could add some, some dollar figures to. Um, uh, just off base, the McDonald's, um, as a matter of fact, they're even able to pay rent, which I thought was astonishing, uh, at, you know, with their card. So the, you can get one card that does a whole lot of different things. And the fact that uh, we're, we're looking to see who's offering what and how they work to find out how, if we're going to go where we're using, because you guys know we use the swipe card at the pool now, we're going to expand on that. We're just looking at how other people are using it to, to potentially find out use that may work for us as well. Okay. I promise Teresa, there's your, your noise for the film strip. We are offering discounted movie not tickets. Not hammering anymore. Again, no, not hammering. We get the movie ticket. Uh, what we've done is, uh, you know, as we're trying to expand what we offer to our to our residents, um, uh, you know, we membership, yeah, you know, has its advantages. And one of the things we did was we bought discounted movie tickets. We can buy them in bulk. They don't expire. Uh, so we bought them, and, and basically if you want to go to the movies, if you're going to go to Salisbury and go uh, to the movie theater over there, you can come in here and pre, you know, buy your tickets and then go to your movie. Uh, and you'll see uh, instead $10.50 at the, at, you know, at the movies, you can buy them here for $7.50. Yes? It's $7.50 for seniors at the movies. I, I, look, I, I, I agree. 750 for seniors. More people get enough as it is. But only 23% of our population qualify for that. Okay. According to Lay's census. So now I'm meeting 71% of our population's needs. Good comeback. I just I had it. Well done, Bob. That was late. No, that's the late. latest census data as we're as we're looking at it. So 23. Mm-hmm. Seniors are getting smaller. Well, or we're growing less. Bob. They're moving yes, elsewhere. It's 77 percent no. 23? All right. All right, let's not. Uh, you come know what? Come on, come on. Sit quietly. <laughs> come on. Let's go. All right, we're excited about the movie tickets. You know, for, for those that, um, you know, if you want to buy them as a gift, if you want to get them as, a, you know, something for birthdays, we thought this was a neat thing to offer. And again, the whole thing is quality and providing things that you could get, you know, a, a discount, a privilege for being here. Extra service. Extra Are you service. Ocean City? I'm sorry, sir. Are they good in Ocean City? No, Regal Theaters Regal, is wherever Regal is. Any Regal. Sounds great. Any Regal Theater if you're traveling. Thank you. Baltimore. Okay. <clears throat> the activities guide. I'm going to show you a precursor. They're being printed now, but I thought this was interesting. Is that Bill Reiko in the picture? Last year, no. yeah. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> Last year's guide, and we uh, Teresa Looks printed like copies it. to share with you. This year's guide. This is is we printed it off of the. Um, 
obviously when the new ones come, they're going to be on a little better quality and they'll be put together a little, you know, stapled properly. That's our new activity guide. Compared to this year, last, you know, five years or so, we've been doing it like this. Okay, now you notice it's full color. It's uh, inside this is not. Okay, and a lot more things happening in here. Full color guide. Bless you. Thank you. 1,300 more copies printed this year for distribution to put in other locations. New layout, which includes staff photos, sponsors, and junior golf as some examples. Okay, if you notice by the colors, it's laid out by color, so if you want to find something, it's easier to go through and find it. Then, of course, everybody says, much like they did the last OP report, oh my goodness, you're spending too much money. I beg to differ. We saved $2,500 on the printing for the summer guide this year, and we have a much more quality product. We're looking at things differently uh, by shopping it out, by not putting, this was created by one company that handled the print, the design, the mail, all the pieces together. Well, our marketing department, i.e. Teresa, went back and said, wait a minute, if I bid this out, and she bid out five or six at least different companies for each of the parts, a little more work on our end, but $2,500 savings and a much higher quality product, I think it was worth the effort. Excellent. So, what will the binding be like, Bob? I'm sorry? What will the binding be like? Uh, just like a regular, it, it'll be like yeah. the, the newsletter was. Okay. Yeah, you won't see, we stapled those just so you, you generally. Yeah, I heard you say that part, but I didn't hear what the part Yeah, it'll just be the normal one where it's on the end. So, just be a much easier and nicer laid out. But I think as folks get those, they're going to be very pleased. Uh, what was interesting, I wanted to point out the savings because we've had similar luck when we printed the uh, quarterly report and I did have some folks grab me at the cafe and go, yeah, but you spent too much money. Truth of the matter is we did not. Uh, this one we saved money by shopping it out. Last one we shopped out, but we sold ads. The ads offset the new cost. So we're actually providing more quality product at a cheaper price. Very, very pleased with these efforts. Okay. So, okay. Teresa, thank you for that. You have to uh, explain, you have to explain to people that you're not spending their money. Everything's just a Well, we, you know, we are spending some, but these know, but types of things, we're just doing it smart. Saving money. Yes. $2,500 and more copies. So, I, I'm just pleased that they can be with it. There's no golf in here? There is golf. No, I guess. It's not as big. It's in there. Under G. What color is it? <laughs> I hope it's green, but it may not be. Okay, I, I mean, you know, I don't doubt it, I just tell you a hard time finding it. There's on the front, this is what you can yeah. find. Yeah. Trees so a color guide on the front. Yeah. All right, I'm going right. to keep, keep rolling. When all else fails, read the directions. All right, <laughs> Mr. Stevens, I, since you love my slides, here, come on, watch it spin. Yeah, I do these for you. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> all right. Our new beach club, um, parking pass. Uh, I, you guys have seen those over the years. It's that, that blue. It, it is so thick if you have one. I mean, it really, and, so and lose it. just it was different. We, what we did was upgrade these. Two purposes, okay? Wasn't for just for the look. We actually had a purpose behind this. If you'll notice down here the barcode and the number, okay? So once you get assigned these, if you're going to renew it every year, just keep your pass. You can send us a check. We can renew it online. You're done. You never have to come in for it. Just you mean keep like your pass. license plates. You don't have to get license plates every year. Just saying, we're trying to save energy and effort, make it a bit easier in your life. The other thing you notice, the bar scanner. One of the things that we had budgeted and, and we're looking at utilizing is potentially using one of the bar scanners. The attendance at the beach. What we found. I'm not going to say people are dishonest, but. Things did happen where once you drove, a party would drive into the parking lot, they would take the pass out, run it around to give it to somebody so they could come into the parking lot. Someone else ain't car further down. By scanning them, you scan it. If your car's in the parking lot, guess what? We're, you know, potentially, you're already, here. you're already here. How'd that happen? Okay? <laughs> Just as an FYI. Now, what that's going to mean is potentially scanning out when someone leaves so we know that they're out. You're going to just so we know, people. Well, you know what? Dishonesty is going to get you every time. So we feel this is going to be a cost savings, uh, both in, in effort from our, our folks at work over there and be able to track our activities over there much, much more accurately. So we're pleased about these. And we well, think, well, yes, sir. I agree with Rick. I think these last two or three things we've heard about, the cost savings, when it looks like we might have spent more, 
Uh, you know, I, I would like you to work with Teresa and even the Communications Advisory Committee. Let's put together a communications plan out to the, the members so that they understand what's going on here. There's some real critical changes happening here on how we function and operate. They're saving us money in the long run, not the least of which is not having to redo these things every year. Um, I do think there is there is an opportunity that we need to make sure people know what's happening. These are you know these are fairly substantive changes that we want to make sure people don't think we're because the assumption is going to be we spend money. So let, let's put some kind of communications plan out to the folks on the website, or however you do it, to make Got sure it. people are aware yeah. of it. Okay. Okay. Any questions about these? We've ordered them. They should be in any time now. All right. What's Why new in membership? John, you need to watch this one, my friend. This is for you. <laughs> to the gentleman's point in the back left, who, who had some criticals, so I'm going to give a positive here. We now offer 12-month memberships to allow more people to make payments because it is hard. I mean, uh, let's think about it. You, here's how the plan works. But if you, if you think about this, our assessment and memberships all come due at the same time. For those that may want to use the facilities, they, they can't because they can't afford it. We're real excited about this. What we're going to do, if you, we're going to put you on the 12-month payment plan. What that also allows you to do is renewals of your membership come based on when you started, or if you go with the annual membership, based on when you start. So if you don't, if you wait till June to sign up for golf on a 12-month membership, your renewal's in June. Same with swim, same with tennis. These are for annual memberships only. These do not apply, okay, I stress do not apply to the three-month summer membership. The, the, those costs are much, much less, uh, you know, they're just a lot cheaper and, and advertising over 12 months would, would not work for us. We felt this would. So we, we heard, we listened, I mean, this was something that we talked about we wanted to do, so we found a way to do it. And, and I applaud Art and, and his team, Ruth Ann and all, because a lot of energy had to go into finding a way to make this work. But we're there now. So real pleased to be able to offer this. Yes, sir. The person wants to make monthly payments on their, uh, not membership, but their annual dues? Annual dues is different. We have not, we're, we're going with membership first, okay? Uh, and we, we'll see how this year goes. There is also a big difference on that, and that's a great point. Uh, when you're paying your, your annual dues, okay, if we went on payments, the way that would have to work, and again, we're not doing it this year, but just so everybody understands, you would make your May payment for this year, okay? Your, your, mem your annual dues are due in May. You would immediately start making monthly payments because when next May, you'd be due for next year's, okay? You're always, you're paying ahead on those. So that's why with these, this is more pay as you use. Right. We'd be in arrears with everybody if we started with payment plans starting May 1, if we said, all right, we'll take 12 months of payments because you're technically you're due for this year, May 1st. Right. I, I think also to answer your question, Rick, there is a plan in place that they do have that you can prepay your yeah. dues on yes. a monthly Absolutely. basis. Yes, we do time. allow that. You can, so in other words, so it doesn't all come come uh, due on May. Right. So you can January, pay. You can start paying anytime you want, right. and they keep track of it. You don't have to pay it all. It's not a fixed payment plan. Sort of it's a, layaway. Just whatever, layaway. It's a layaway. Like a, Yes, sir. Like a layaway plan. You and you'd be surprised at the number of people who actually utilize that. that. You have to emphasize. You first have to be paid up. That's right. Yeah, you can't right. be delinquent. Right. You pay completely, and then you can immediately start to pay yeah. in advance if you want. Yeah. Yes. Surprises. How many? Hundred and people that pay in advance. Hundred and hundred and some. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> That's surprising. Anyway, people are taking. Some people are taking advance. advantage of it. It's it is. It is available. Um, yes, sir. Leave, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. This. I just want to make sure I understand mm -hmm. the the last one, the annual memberships. Okay, so just take golf. <laughs> sure. Um, so. In June, I uh, decided to become a member of the golf club. Yes, sir. Okay. And so I put down 25% of the amount, and then I'm going to pay uh, for 11 months, you know, July 
through the following June. Yes, sir. And, um, okay, if, uh, and I'm going to pay by check, you know, I'm going to send a check in every month. No, we'll debit, we'll debit your account, your checking account. Okay, that was part of my question. You'll make it automatic. Well, so automatic. It has to be, that's part of the program. Yeah, it's automatic. It has to be automatic, automatic. Yeah. Yeah. yes. Okay. Or yeah. Okay, I would think uh, so. Not at this point, okay, but yeah. can we just do the uh, out of their yeah. bank Yeah, account. we'll do checking right now. Out of their bank Savings account. Okay, so if at a certain point, you know, in June, or let's say starting June, and then you get to February, <clears throat> or let's say you get to December, and they stop payment mm -hmm. or something like that, mm -hmm. Then, then basically we have we've of, lost the next kind of no recourse, right? Correct. For seasonal, you could work the see, you could work the game. Yeah, we just don't get a membership next year. Yeah, what, one of the things that we'll have to look at this is the first time we've offered this. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, folks are talking about it. so by being able to track it and offer it this year is step one. To 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 your point is exactly we may have some, some people gaming the system to only pay x amount but that's part of why you put 25 percent down up front and where i know golfers aren't dishonest they count every stroke if it's in they hit it from where it is so i know i'm not worried about golf but if that were the case though after a year when we're tracking it we'll be able to then decide if it's working and if we need to make some other decisions well let me ask you this yes sir it's like an assessment you know you owe it you owe it Will they sign an agreement up front that says, I owe a year's worth of money? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So in other words, we would have, just again, theoretically, other recourses for going back oh, we after could go the to rest collection. of the money. Yes, sir. We could go to collection on it if we yes, wanted to. Yes, sir, we could. Get a That's correct. Yeah, there's a get a lead. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah. There is a document yeah. that they sign when, you know, when they fill in the information. Okay. And, okay. Well, on you know, I think. You know, I'm just for all these things. Yeah, um, problem. This Good question. Does, this does have a budget impact. Um, the present system that has existed for many years provides for that everybody has the same anniversary date, May 1. In your example, Dave, if somebody decides to not make the decision to play golf or have a golf membership, let's say, until July 1st, um, for this year's budget, that person will only pay monthly from July on. Correct. They will not, they're deferring, in, in essence, their annual membership. Yeah. So it's we've lost nice. now May, June, did I say July 1? Yeah. A couple Let's months say we've, we've lost that revenue permanently. The, the dollar impact, we don't know yet. You can't. Now, I think what Bob is betting on is that whatever that loss is, and there will be a loss, people who defer will be made up for by additional people being attracted to the idea and subscribing to an annual golf membership or tennis membership that otherwise would pay on a per play basis. So is that not the equation here you're trying no, to? Exactly. We're, you're, you're, we're not just financing it. This is very different from what we've done in the past. Yes. This is allowing people to say, I choose to become a member not on May 1st, as I've always had to do, but now later in the year. So if you're uncertain about whether you're going to play enough rounds of golf this year to justify your forking over $1,200, and you want to think about it, you'll delay it a couple of months, delay it a couple of months. It may be that when they get to August, they say, you know what, it's already three months into the season. I'm not going to pay that $1,200. So there definitely is going to be a budgetary impact, but I think it's a net impact. It's a net of the loss of those yeah. people who defer uh, or just by virtue of making the decision to defer and then deciding not to do it, to be made up for the other people that would not have otherwise had a membership now deciding that they will have a membership on these terms. So, sure, you know, the, 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 we'll know, the, we'll know at the end of the year. Yeah, there's no question about that. Are there, is there, have you thought about an incentive uh, to simply pay in for the advance? We, we did, and, and everything that we're trying to do this year is keeping it simple. Um, we, we thought the first year coming out with it, 
let's do it this way. We did consider an incentive. You know, if you pay in full, you get discount of X, you know, in your membership. But if you recall, through our budget process, we said we were holding the line on all our fees. We're holding the you know, we kept everything where it is with the exception of, of 18 holes of golf, $2 more for the cart. We held the line. So part of this was we, we made a conscious decision not to offer discounts or changes. We just wanted to, mm -hmm. since first time we've offered it, keep it as simple for folks as we yeah, could. Yeah, even if it weren't a discount, even, you know, adding a couple of, you know, coupons with a membership or something like that could, you know. Well, we took I don't know. Know. The, this, not, this program favors mm -hmm. the customer. Absolutely. Very much. Not Ocean Ponds. This favors well, the well, customer. Yeah, well, 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 no, it, 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 it can well, favor. Okay. It can be positive. It, it, if I may, I think this is absolutely the step in the right direction that we need. Uh, as I've often stated in these meetings, May is an extremely, April, May is an extremely expensive time for members of our association. Mm -hmm. I fully understand what Pete is saying. There may, in fact, there is going to be maybe some revenue loss of a couple of months. However, when I sign up in August, if I decide, taking what you said, mm -hmm. I don't decide, mm -hmm. but I do but. decide, I end up playing all next year, okay? And then comes August, I re-up again. So, I mean, I think, yeah, there's an initial loss, but in the end, this should, in fact, make it easier for me to manage my money as a homeowner. Well, and I think that's what you have in mind. Not and, only that, but on our resources, if not, if everything doesn't come due May 1st, from a management side, managing the association, we can manage our resources, our staffing. Everything doesn't hit them. We go through April, May, and June. By far, in this building, become the worst months from just the sheer numbers. You know, Absolutely. Hit, we're able to then spread that out over a longer period. Think about it. If we can know people are coming due in August, their memberships, we can be proactive and send them a reminder. Hey, don't forget it's coming due. You know, have you enjoyed your experience? We'll be able to capture and monitor that information like we've never done before. So this is, just, like you said, the first step of many in a new direction. And also from a marketing perspective, it allows us to market annual memberships year-round, oh, yeah. yes. which you cannot do yes. right now, and that is significant. Correct. Absolutely. John, well, just so there's no, no misunderstanding here, I am not objecting to this. Oh, no, 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 I, I, no, 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 I didn't say that. I understand the loss, okay? I understand where art's coming from. However, I think in the long run... It would be my good. hope that this will generate more memberships more yes. than we've had in the past by virtue of people having a, a better option, a different option, yes. and more that meets their particular needs. So well, we won't know if we don't try it. Exactly. And I think that's right. part and parcel of what we're buying into. I think under Bob, uh, we're, we're trying a lot of different things and new ideas, and by I'll God, uh, let, let's we continue. Had, we had continue. a lot of people, and John knows this as well as I do, there were a lot of people asking for this. So Well, now they're going to have it. That's great. Right. See what happens. Okay. All right. right. Hey, Bob, why is that guy going to stop the hip every day? Uh, he likes that dance. Come on. Endless, man. Endless. Uh, OPA and SU, you know, we, we worked with uh, Salisbury University for a number of years. Uh, we, we've uh, kind of rekindled that in a way this year which uh, we're excited about. Uh, speaking with Kyle, who is the, the um, lead for their um, sailing team, you know, as we talk to them and partnering with them, those that don't know, they, you know, they, they have their boats here, their sail, uh, <laughs> sailboats here, and they have for a number of years. They've had it in two different locations. They've had it at Swimmer Racket as well as at the Yacht Club. Uh, where they're, they've had it last year at the Yacht Club, and that seemed to work better uh, for them. And Here's some examples of activities. Uh, you know, they had a, a regattas last year that went very well. They had three other schools come in and race the SU team out of the Yacht Club. Uh, when I was talking to Kyle, they had a lot of success with that. Folks obviously coming back in were coming to our facility to use it for food and beverage. Uh, in doing so, they, they haven't traditionally paid us for anything use of our space. And, and, and with that being said, when, when we sat and met with them or were talking with them, we said, what kinds of things? And he said, well, we're always looking for projects. So as the discussion went a little further, uh, one of the things they said, um, we mentioned Java Beach, where we're looking at putting picnic tables. Well, we had two options. We were going to go buy picnic tables or, or buy the lumber and have public works build them. Well, Kyle said, well, we love doing projects like that, and, and if we could put a plaque out there donated by you know, Salisbury University, I said, I don't have a problem with that. 
So they're going to actually, we're going to split the cost of the materials. They're going to build the um, picnic tables, and we'll follow, we'll have someone overseeing the construction, but they assure us that they can do that. And uh, they're, uh, part of the partnership is they're going to build the picnic tables for Java Beach for use of our facility. And each year they'd like to have a project that the sailing team can tackle um, as a partner with us because they don't pay us for having it there. And I think that's a win-win. They were thrilled, we were thrilled. It's taking advantage of, of working with a, a local institution. Again, partnering is important for us. Yes, sir. Initially, the agreement, as I understood it, was Salisbury Sailing Club was to offer OPA members free lessons a couple of times a year. Okay. What happened to that program? We are actually, in addition to the projects, we are looking at some, a couple of other things. The challenge with the free lessons, okay, is there's a liability issue because these students are not captains, okay? Now, we did discuss hiring a captain that could oversee the sailing team, someone with their license, that could be the, the there, there's some, some issues there that we need to resolve. We are exploring those issues uh, because they would like to offer a sailing program here throughout the summer months. And as, as we talked with Kyle, uh, they, you know, with their sailing team, always identifying two or three students or four students that would like to do that as their summer you know, um, job offering the program, but we there there was some liability and some because they're not licensed, they came up. So we're we're exploring it and okay. we would like to do that. There's just liability we need to manage with it. So we're excited about that partnership with them. And we're I think we're getting more out of it this year. Uh, County commissioners, uh, just uh, for those that are don't know, we submitted our formal request to them. Uh, and and uh, we submitted that in writing, but we also had our, our annual dinner, and it was just a, a, to talk to them and answer any questions they may have had. Uh, we're under a benefits review, uh, something that we looked at, promised right after the budget we would do. We're, we're looking at our, our holistically OPA's benefits package. Uh, we, we spent several hours with, with Chris uh, Carroll, who's vice president with Smith Crawford Daly, who's a broker who can shop it out. Um, we're not only looking at what our program offers through our current uh, company, but we're also looking at Blue Cross Blue Shield, Cigna, Aetna, all the other programs to find out who else offers it. And then, and then um, as it came up in the budget process, is our plan correct with the way we fund it? So we are, we are going through those steps to get some comparisons and, and to be able to lay those out. And as that develops, I'll, I'll certainly keep, keep you gentlemen updated uh, throughout the process. What's the timeline for that? Uh, we need to renew April, May, May time May 1st. Yeah, May 1st, we need to renew it. So uh, Chris is supposed to be back with us by the end of the month with, with sort of a layout of, of the different plans, some of the things we discussed, and some cost analysis to go with that. But just so you know, we are we are delving pretty deep into that, and and that's not not the most sexiest or jazziest stuff to go through. It's a lot of detail, but uh, it's something that needs to be done. Uh, research, natural gas, big issue right now. A lot of energy created around that. Um, here are some things that have been done just to bring everyone up to speed. And, and Les is very much aware of this because he and I have been speaking pretty regular about it. Um, I have done some some homework over the last. I'd say four or five months now, speaking uh, with, with a board member at Chesapeake and, and with ESG, and this was only inquiring so I understood the information. I didn't ask for anything. I didn't, there was no implication. I just need to get smarter because it, it keeps coming up, and with cost of fuel, I think it's important we understand it. Recently, uh, spoken with Senator Mathias's office. Uh, we've been in contact several times about this. Uh, he is, he is, uh, potentially going to propose some legislation which regulates uh, propane <coughs> gas, which is not regulated, okay? And um, so that is something they're looking at. Uh, I have spoken with Commissioner Boggs about it. I uh, recently met with uh, Mr. Bud Shea. Those that don't know, Mr. Shea um, had a petition. He's been working on this for several years now. He's been tracking. He's got a lot of history. Uh, and, and Les Purcell and I uh, met with him and went over in great detail where he is. Um, and then as recently as uh, a day ago, uh, Senator Mathias called again 
with some updated information. So we're, we're right now in the, in the research look, figure out exactly where things are. So, because there's a lot of information out there. Did ESG put line, when ESG, when we entered the contract, they put lines in, were they able to handle natural gas? Some people are going to tell you they were, some say they weren't. Uh, what's it actually cost to retrofit your home if you're on propane to natural gas? I've heard numbers as low as $100, I've heard as high as $1,000. So until we get some of these facts, you know, lined up where we can actually go, here's where we are with this, um, you know, it's a little premature, at least from my perspective, to share anything other than we're, we're actively into it and we're doing some research. Mr. Shea asked me on behalf of, of the residents he was working with, if I wouldn't go a step further to pull some of this together and talk with Les, um, we, we actually discussed it and, and uh, he, he would like me to continue pushing that. So that's why I'm just sharing what's happening uh, as we look into it as a community. For those of you who have gas in your home and maybe have not been following this, uh, it's been bits and pieces around. Uh, let me just whet your appetite by saying a few miles up the road in Delaware, they're paying three dollars and some cents per unit of gas, and you're paying nine for propane. That's the difference between natural gas and propane. It's money. Right. Is it the is it the cost of the product, or is it the mar or is it the profit margin of the product? It's the profit margin. It's a lot of things like that. It's, it's a, a lot of yeah. things. Yeah, it's not one. <laughs> Including the energy level being different one versus the other. It's yeah. complex, but it's yeah. significantly less expensive. Yeah, but that's, that's less favorable less to gas, what you just pointed out. You can absolutely but, count on savings 50%. You can count on savings. Yes, sir. Well, in, in, in your discussions, one of the things I've heard come up from people talking <coughs> is, is that I can buy propane cheaper outside the gate or some other location by putting in my own tank, etc. cetera. Yes. In your discussion under the research section, did yes, that sir. come up? And was there an explanation as to why ESG appears to be so much higher? Uh, John, to be honest with you, it depends on who you speak to. Um, so, uh, At this speak. point, ESG isn't talking a lot. They don't have much incentive to. Okay. But that's not, I have not in the last yeah. probably three, four months, I have not spoken to ESG. So, so from an incentive, I have not reached out back, I have not come full circle. That's fine. I just did some research limited. and gathering information. Yeah, now that wondered. the issue is starting to come, you know, come back up with more energy, I have residents coming to my office saying, hey, I'd like you to look into it. We have a petition started with X number. Uh, you know, fuel costs being what they were this year, uh, potentially being the same next year, I think it is something that deserves a little more attention, and that's th that's what I'm doing with it. Okay, uh, that second bullet, then, you haven't spoken to them in four months? Yes, sir. Okay. Again, it, this was previous because it was just research to understand what had occurred. Okay. There have been some conversations with private citizens like Bud, but uh, yeah. nobody knows how factual information is that he's getting. So. Yeah, I'm trying to get yeah. facts we're, we're, so we can operate with real Believe me, we're, we're working on it. Yeah, okay. Let me just make sure that I'm, I'm clear on the objective of what you're doing and what Les, I know you're a big part of this as well, is that you're trying to get facts on the table so that we can work from a foundation of a single understanding of what the costs are and aren't, network is and isn't, you know, distribution costs are and aren't so that we as Ocean Pines can, as an association, can provide a foundation for the discussion because right now, as you said, there's 15 different views of what the facts are. Yes. So the first step is get the facts. Is there then a thought that there would be something brought to this table for us yes. to support? Okay. Yeah. But without the facts, I can't tell you what that is. I understand that. I'm just and, making and sure I understand the, the objective. Yeah, here. I'll go a step up. further. I've also, and it's not on the slide, there's a, uh, um, a, a delegate in Cecil County that's, that's presenting legislation or proposed legislation to, um, to regulate, you know, uh, propane I believe much like what Senator Mathias is, is doing, and I got called. Would we be interested in in 
uh, submitting a letter to them saying we, we're in favor of it. He, they have a rural community that, that's similar to us. Uh, and, and again, I, as, I, as I've done, as I, I appreciate the input. I'll keep you posted. I mean, it's not happening overnight. Right. I want to get information before I come to you gentlemen and say, here's what, here's what I've found out, here's what I recommend, because it, it'd be a shot in the dark right now. All right. Fair enough. I just want to make sure we're all clear on what the objective is. <clears throat> I would I'm hope. All for it. I, I, I would sure hope, though, that, uh, and we haven't presented even this to you yet, but very quickly, uh, the board, I would hope, would agree that it's well worth the effort to investigate this. Thing. Absolutely. I, I, that's yeah. my view. Anyway. Yeah, that's that's a twenty thousand dollar. Yeah, absolutely. That's certainly given the amount of interest. It's an over yeah. and get and yeah. get and get the facts. I think that's part of our our. Sure. Um, part of those facts, though, of course, would be looking at the required changes in the infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, to bring in natural gas. Uh, Actually, you know, excluding the whether or not. Well, <coughs> there's some disagreement about whether the pipes that we already have will handle it or not. Some, like he said, some say that it will, yeah. some say it won't. Well, to be honest, Les, I don't even know if we have any pipes. Well, or whether or not Eastern Shore Gas owns those pipes. We have a contract with them. Yeah. They put the pipes in. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll have updated yeah, information. So we're, but the oh, actual actually. the actual switchover is just an is a little orifice on each piece of equipment. There's one on your dryer. There's one on your yeah. Have you furnace. have you looked through the contract? Uh, briefly, but yes, I have a copy of it. Yeah, okay. Okay. One of the okay. All right. Um, the reason I say briefly is because I just got a copy briefly <laughs> a little while ago, okay. and other people are studying it very closely. So. All right. Some other, other things that weren't in the slides, and again, part of the reason you have the one page per slide, but I have some a few additional things to add, <coughs> as I was told I could do, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, I have looked into uh, liquor license in Ocean City just because there seem to be questions about can we uh, get a liquor license? Can we not? Uh, can we change our liquor license? You know, upgrade it, change it, what have you. Uh, the, our liquor license was established as uh, a s classification of C, which is a club classification. Mm. Uh, one of the primary factors, uh, as I looked into it, Dave, if you look at it, everything on the east side of Coastal Highway. I say everything. I, I found one that I don't knows 100%, but uh, other than that one, is associated with a hotel or a motel establishment on the east side. There are no standalone facilities, bar establishment, restaurant bar establishments. Okay, if you go down Coastal Highway in your head, that's by design, as I looked into it a little further. Um, apparently Ocean City, the city mayor and city council have, have held the line on that that it has to be associated to get the A or B, upgrade our license, okay, uh, you, you need to have beds, basically, a hotel, you know, sleeping. Isn't there a moose something on the boardwalk bar? Uh, everything, everything is attached by one means or another to a, a hotel or motel. Some, some by, phrase, or another. By, by some, some, some means or another. Okay, okay. and well, it has been free. I don't have a list for uh, it, but I'm not sure that's true. I, I, I'm, I said I the majority. The majority, you said. Majority, yeah. No, you said all. Vast majority. I, I did not say all. All. all right, listen to what I said. Okay. Said I found <laughs> one. Okay, I know the vast majority are. I don't know if that's the only one. If you want to do your research and look, feel free to. The ones I have looked into do have some sort of association with a hotel or a motel. Okay. I'm not saying all, but the vast majority certainly do. As I got a little further on some, I thought, no way. There's an affiliation one way or the other. Okay, we are a club license. C, okay, membership to use it. So I'm just giving you guys, uh, this okay. isn't... But the key thing is, you said by design. This is by, by design. By design. I'm sharing it because it keeps coming up, right. and I thought, right. instead of just kicking the can down the street, yeah. I was going to get some more information to share with everybody. Keep going. Okay? Um, uh, so you're still researching? Yes. No, I've found out what I need to find out. I will, I will be happy to gather if you guys say, Bob, we want to change it to a... I, I'm not changing it unless I'm directed to do so. There's going to be a lot of energy. There's a... Let me... I'll go a step further. 
our um, to change it, and this is I gotta be careful how I say it because this is not 100% factual because I don't have it in writing. Our zoning, okay, because the way we're zoned for that plot of land there, okay, is where this actually ties in. So to change our liquor licensing, our zoning would have to be changed. So it's a two-step process. Okay. Okay. So, so that's where the zoning attached to a hotel or had been affiliated with a hotel or motel at some point. As I dug a little deeper, those facts started to come out. I'm like, wow, didn't realize that. Well, I don't want to give you a headache, but... Uh, you, you're not. Two years ago, Bill Rico and I had two sit-down meetings with the Ocean City officials mm -hmm. on this subject. We were told in private, really, not for the record, that the only objection to us changing our license the last time it was applied for, which was several years ago, was Dr. Berger, who operated an establishment about 100 yards from us. The Ocean Club. The Ocean Club. He's not there anymore. He don't care anymore. As a matter of fact, uh, Leighton Moore is not in the least bit against it. And um, they didn't think it would be that big a deal. Mm -hmm. So, If I remember right, Les, because I sat in on one of those meetings, was that you have to convince the council of Ocean City to Probably. give it to us. Because they vote on now, it. Now, I have not made a presentation to the council. I have not sat before a group of the folks at the council or the mayor about it. Let's make sure we're clear. I haven't done it. Just doing research so I know the facts of what's happening here. Okay? But we are a C license, Class C license, and that's how it's a club license, and that's the reasoning behind the club license. Just okay. facts, just right. wanted to make sure I shared it with well, everybody. I mean, I'd like to direct you to talk to the mayor. I, and, and the, uh, I would recommend that we hold off on this for exactly. time being. Let, let, let's, There's still yeah. other things that we have yeah. to be concerned with before that, right. yeah. mm -hmm. namely the IRS, I think. We can, we can work this yeah. offline, but we're not going to... Yeah, it's for getting the facts. Move on. I know they had those those talks, but it sounds like you know we still have as many questions as we have uh, answered. I now. don't. You guys might, but if you have your questions, I'll be happy to try to get well, research I don't even, on. But I mean, I I I now am clear on where we are with our license, the type of license, which I wasn't last time it came up. Now I am. Well, so you guys, if you have specifics you want me to research, I'll either point you in a direction or I'll try to do it. Well, I guess what we don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the you know the, the only reason for looking into it is exactly um, what we need to do. Uh, what would be the requirements for us to change the, the license to a, a public license rather mm -hmm. than a private club's license? You understand? No one asked me to do that. And no, no, that's, right? That, that, okay. that, that's that's, that's a, coming. Okay, I can see that now. Well, some, that. well somebody, yeah, some may, or may, we may have to discuss whether we even want to do that. I mean, that's still open to it, but. Uh, I don't know. I mean, do we know exactly who licenses? Is it Ocean City or Worcester County? The county. The, the yeah. county. I tell you what, okay, then why are we talking to Ocean City? I, I don't, we could talk for because hours. Because without there. them, the county won't do anything. Yeah, I, don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I guess. Doesn't this really relate to the business plan for the facility up there? For hours here. It does. Bob, you and I will take this offline and do an update at the next board meeting on just, you know, so that we can, I mean, I appreciate where we are so far. There were some other questions, but we're not going to handle them here because you haven't researched them yet. So we'll take it from there. You and I'll take it from there. <coughs> okay. Um, all right, I'll end there. That way I don't run into too many other questions. Are you ready for questions or comments now? Yes, sir. I have two. Um, one sort of an advertisement. You, The baseball fields and the other things you're trying to do, um, Where's the money going to come from? When you ask the, the baseball fields, the I was running the budget to redo those. Right. They're but reserved it, for the funds are coming from the replacement reserve fund. Yes, sir. There you go. That it's means, coming from the replacement reserve. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming from the replacement reserve fund. We we this is part of the ongoing maintenance of the facilities. Right. And That's we're fine. just on it, yeah. making sure it's happening. And as we're doing it, we're trying to do it to the best. You know. Getting it that right. notch higher. Yes. We've already through January taken nine hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars. Second question, on your list for the public works, yes, sir. It, it provoked in my mind something that I was aware of months ago and I'm wondering where it stands. Mm -hmm. The trees on Ocean Parkway, um, 
South End that yes. uh, a particular driver, I believe, plowed down something close to 15 trees or something? 12? A little less than that. But 12? Eight. Eight, only eight. Okay. Yes, sir. Have they been replaced or what's the plan there? Still uh, a good job. There's a plan to replace those trees. Uh, there's not necessarily a. Uh, Yes, it's a plan to replace them, to okay. answer your question. Now, whether we can receive Timing the funding, well, yeah, the time, it's just the weather from, hasn't permitted to put the trees back in because it happened this winter. Uh, however, uh, there's still an ongoing investigation, so I'm not sure, you know, if we put them back right now, it's our cost because we, uh, again, ongoing investigation, whether we can go after anybody or they've actually charged someone for them. Okay. I can't really talk to that issue right now. What are you talking about? Down in the center, uh, center of the parkway in the south okay. end. It's a malicious uh, a oh, action. That, somebody in one of the snowstorms went out and went slaloming and took out eight trees. You're not talking about that one particular house lot down there. No, no, it was a different. It was the center. The, the police have investigated it. Uh, the, as Bob has suggested, it's being looked at. I was just concerned about and uh, inquiring about, not concerned, but inquiring about uh, any plan to replace those trees. Just a sad case. I came out of there one morning, and all these trees are felled, and you can see the tracks in the snow left by the vehicle that plowed them down. Any other questions? Can we move on down the agenda to the, the dog park? I know, Bob, you have talked to some folks interested as I have. Uh, bring up the team here on yeah. what's right. going on with this. Yes, sir. Are you going to pass this out? No. Oh, okay. No. And don't forget, I, I have another item, but I close that. So we'll go to the dog park, but I, I do have one of I, I don't want to forget. Dog park has come up on numerous occasions. Um, you know, folks have mentioned it. Why haven't we done it? Can we do it? Will we do it? Um, spoke to that. Oh, there you go. Uh, we, we have a resident here that, that has shared information with me uh, for, with shared information with me about it. Uh, we've looked at this numerous times. okay again, gathering information. Uh, talking with public works, looking at costs, uh, looking at some other facilities, i.e the one that was just done in, in Salisbury, uh, gave us some ideas of some things that we could do and some of the requirements. Uh, with that being said, we have two areas we've identified, and I have pictures. You, you gentlemen are welcome to see, but I need them back. I didn't make copies. Um, if we were indeed, you know, going to put a dog park in it, and I've got to tell you, I'm in favor of it. Um, but there's a funding issue, i.e., it wasn't in the budget. Uh, to put a park in uh, slightly smaller than an acre that would have the proper gating and the proper um, there's some pass through there's some stuff we've looked into which uh, you have to have a separate when you first go through the first gate the second gate has to be shut you close that behind you then you open the other one to go into the dog area something I would have never imagined but there's some things that you need to follow to safely run one of these uh, and the other part is the type of fencing uh, chain link fence seems to be the fence of choice for several reasons visibility um, cost of the fence and and just the durability of a chain link fence I mean it just holds up very very well uh, we have several spots where the possibility of putting a dog park would go uh, first spot, uh, it, folks tried this five years ago here in the pines they went through a permitting process and it was property just off of the ocean pines proper and in doing that I uh, had to get go through the county to get it approved to, and, and through that process the, they, uh, apparently the zoning for this particular piece of property was approved and then the owner of the property after zoning was approved decided they didn't want a dog park there which put this team back into to, to the beginning phases. My suggestion is we look at we have two parcels of property we've identified. First parcel is uh, at Manklin Meadows complex reason this is ideal for us there's already a bathrooms there there's already parking there there's already it's already a park so fencing off an area over there uh, from a uh, an approval process would be relatively easy uh, because of the way it's already set up what that would 
where that just to give you and you're looking at the map the aerial view but basically what that is is uh, when you go into Mankler Meadows when you first turn into the complex directly to your right uh, is the community gardens directly to your left is is a sparsely wooded area uh, that is over an acre uh, that could easily handle a dog park uh, if, if the board said yes we we're interested in it with or without um, the second I'm sorry? With or without trees? Uh, with the trees. It's with the you, trees. Yeah, you can have the trees. But it's it's far, it's not real dense, so it, it, the feasibility of having it there is, is certainly a possibility. The other... Uh, Built-in fire hydrants. Other, the other part that's there, uh, or the other part that's in good. Ocean Pines, which is interesting, uh, that I think actually, as we look a little further, may offer even more potential use, is uh, Bainbridge Park. Uh, and there's a uh, aerial view that's gone around. Uh, there are no houses that directly abut Bainbridge Park. It's elevated, and, and quite frankly, it's underutilized there. There is a parking, uh, there's ample space for it. And um, the down, uh, I'll give you pros and cons. Downside Bainbridge Park, you're going to have to have a map to find your way there because it's not right off of, like Manklin Meadows, right off Manklin Creek Road. So there's, there's pros and cons to both, but uh, Bainbridge Park, it's elevated, it drains well, it's relatively secluded and doesn't uh, back up to home. So either of those locations and talking with Public Works and looking at it, we felt would be good potential <coughs> locations for a dog park. Uh, now, with that being said, cost of a dog park. When we're going through the numbers, uh, to, for us to do the work and put the park in, uh, we're estimating somewhere between sixteen dollars and $20,000. And it seemed high, but if you think about it, with the double gates, with the size of the gates, with the amount of work, and that included putting some benches and some other things that we felt not just putting a chain link fence up, you know, with a gate, you know, to do some of the other things to make it a nice facility. Uh, it, it is not in the budget, nor is it next year's budget, but we do, uh, I have had a lot of interest in it, and I have a gentleman here that would like to speak about it if, if you gentlemen would allow that. Yes. Yeah, objection. Objection. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm Jack Levering, six week in Miller Court. Been a resident for several years in the Pines, and uh, did remember the effort by the other group that tried to promote a dog park four or five years ago. But they were trying to go out and buy a property, and then go through all the regulations of the county and so forth. So, so the expenses were quite, quite more than we're talking about now. Um, I'd like to first thank the board for the consideration, and certainly the manager, the president of the board, for the consideration of this effort, because I think there's a real interest, a genuine interest in our community by pet owners and non-pet owners uh, to have this facility. Um, I've been walking around with my dog, and I've gotten some initial signatures just on a little piece of paper here by very little effort, and uh, people are willing to put their phone numbers down and emails and so forth and saying contact me if, uh, if we can do more. So the interest is there, and, uh, and I haven't even researched into that as much as I could. Um, the reception uh, by people for dog parks are usually very good, and I'd ask you to maybe think through it and say, oh, I don't know, there's going to be barking, and there's going to be disruption, and there's going to be objections. Well, go visit a little dog park. The one in Salisbury just came out. They had a nice article in the paper. Daily Times, a week or two ago, and they're excited about it, and the enthusiasm is rampant. They just love it. Uh, and there's very little barking. Maybe at first when they bring a dog in, there's a little greeting, and then they run and play and, and have a good time. Certain regulations are there that necessitate only dogs that are vaccinated and up to deal on their shots and do their vet are allowed. Any aggressive dogs certainly aren't allowed. So that's not a problem. The locations are good. Uh, is there a fee for that in Salisbury? Excuse me? Is there a special license or fee to use the Salisbury? No, it's, a, it's an operation free park, which is nice. There's no fee to use it. The taxpayers of Salisbury and Wicomico County, uh, the other, in fact, you could take your dog there, I guess, as a Nevada County resident. So that's nice. And uh, we would hope maybe that would be the case here in the Pines, too. Be a wonderful asset, I think, and people that would be coming here to buy a piece of property. I knew that if I came and I had a pet 
and I looked through the wonderful amenities we have in Ocean Pines, which are many. We're very, very lucky. And saw a dog park on that list, I'd say, hey, now that's a nice idea. That's a forward-looking idea. Instead of walking my dog on a leash, I can have a run-free socializing session with my pet. So I think it's a win-win there. And um, I would think that maybe it would help the real estate people a bit, you know, promoting some sales. So I would just uh, encourage the board to give it serious consideration and, and all help and any way possible to forward the idea. And uh, we'll go from there. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bob. And what, and what I would, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, one yeah, quick question. question. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned in passing, I think, talking about the Michelin area, that there are already toilet facilities there, mm -hmm. and, uh, but there wouldn't be in Bainbridge. Is would, there a requirement one way or the other for having one? No, it, it's a park, but that's where some, it's a convenience factor, and that's where some, I, I'm giving you some history, and, and uh, Jack had mentioned it. Um, part of the challenge that the last group, when they put it with the county, because they were changing zoning, the whole nine yards, apparently restrooms came up. If you're already zoned as a park, it alleviates or eliminates that. Okay. That's the only reason I, I mentioned it, is that I'm giving some shortfalls that they hand to. We have That's the two. Good. We're identified as parks, so we're okay on both. Um, now, with that being said, I, I actually think it's a good idea. I, I don't think it creates a challenge in either of the pieces or parcels of property. The Bainbridge, uh, the, the only reason that one, from my perspective, seems a little better. It's higher and drier, and it's just underutilized. Uh, Secondly, and, and we've spoken about this, I don't know that I, I would not propose that we, I'm asking the board for funding for it. If the board were to, to um, agree that this was a good idea, uh, that we could do it, I would recommend we do it in a matching funding type of situation, where if the community group were to raise X amount of funds, that the board match those funds. We've done that with other projects, i.e. the park down um, in Manklin Meadows. Uh, we had an effort out here with skateboard park. So, I mean, I think the, it, the precedent's been set, and, and that would also show the true interest by the community, um, you know, to say, yeah, we'll raise this amount of money and then we'll erect the park. That would be my recommendation. Um, I could also see some opportunity uh, for us from a, um, from a standpoint of, if you wanted to use the park, much like you do the skateboard park, you'd come register your, your animal. That way, if there's any issue in the future, someone saw us all this on this date, we might be able to identify just to mitigate any risk associated. Yes, yes sir. Operational costs. I mean, who will maintain the park? How much will it cost to maintain it? Uh, the, and there well, are operational issues. I, I read, you know, did some research on this mm -hmm. a few years back, too, when the, when the subject came up. But we're going to make, we would obviously maintain the park. I don't have the exact dollars at this point to do it. I know what the cost to put the park together would be. We're pulling up, uh, we're pulling it as, as late as nine last night, information on doggy bags and the little watering thing and those type of things. So, well, I only, yeah, I know you don't yeah. have, I mean, that's fine. But, but yeah, we would need to get those. But yeah. they would be a burden at this point on us. My hope would be there, uh, if, we, if, the, if the maintenance costs are, are somewhat minimal, I would think they would be. I mean, we cut the grass anyway. Uh, we, we maintain our parks. For the, the doggy bags, any of those type of things that go with it, uh, much like, and I'm not going to say that this has to happen, but much like the Pioneer Craft Club, they adopt certain parks, they, they put a lot of energy into it. I would hope that a committee or a group of, of citizens might want to adopt the park to offset the annual cost for us. I would think so. So I mean, can you put together a full, full proposal by the next meeting for us to look at this? Only if there's sincere interest, because I've already done most of the work. <laughs> I, I, have a, I do have a question before you move on with that, though. Yes, sir. We had a number of years back a great idea to put a crabbing pier in. And when we put that crabbing pier in, we found after the fact that there was, in fact, a parking issue that came about that no one ever thought there was going to be because they said there was sufficient parking, etc. Mm -hmm. My concern with Bainbridge is that same issue. How do we know that people are not going to be parking out in the street 
et cetera. And then we have parking complaint. at Bainbridge. I understand that. I thought we also had some parking at the Crab Pier, but people no, started complaining. We didn't have parking at no, I, I can tell you both of them. No and we yeah, never parked. We didn't build that Crab Pier. No, we didn't. The problem at the Crab Pier was that it was already there and people were throwing their garbage out the well, side of it. That was the developer that built the Correct. Right. And there was no parking. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, there is so, parking at Bainbridge. Okay. That would, okay. How many how many cars at Bainbridge will it hold? Any idea? We need to park. I'd say at least 12 by looking at the size here. They're not lined, but... The parking's better at the Manklin Park. Parking is better at Manklin. Yeah, I mean, we have, have more, more parking spaces, yeah, based on the fact we have more activities and, down there. And some of the comments by the people I've talked to are saying, well, we can take our children to the playground. They're playing. And, hey, gosh, we can take our pet. And just across the way, we can, we can have our pet there. And, uh, and the restrooms are there. The parking's there. The traffic flood is maybe a little better. Uh, nothing against the other location. I'm happy to have it anywhere in the pond. Well, yeah, on on the other hand, it. there are those parents and grandparents who kids play on the playground, equipment, and then they'll yeah, go I, and I, run I, around I the woods. That, too. I just don't know if so that's, that's another. I'm very favorably disposed to this. I think it's a great idea, and I'm happy that you have come forward and others have come forward to raise the idea. And uh, so, as one member of the board, I think I'm very, very supportive and hope that we can work have, this out. we check with the dogs to see what they want? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would think it's they want to the one in favor. a couple and they say, yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's the answer is different from the big dogs versus the small dogs. Um, um, it's interesting to see the big and small. Smell, um, they don't mix them. Yeah, get sponsorships yeah. for the dog park. I, I put this this donated by... Or, well, not the land, but the okay. other expenses. But the well, I think there may be some opportunities for senior you know, advertising. They're talking about the group raising part of the money and us paying part of it. Or, you know, we would certainly welcome businesses like as well. Or private donation. Or have a plaque put up. 50, 50. Yeah. Or bench. We, we probably have benches there with plaques. Do you think you can organize that kind of an effort? I mean, I've, I mean, I know numbers of people that, that would support the idea, and I've heard it over three years on the board. Well, um, I'm but, being told but I've never could, seen right? anybody put together the, you know, the, uh, the group the, that, you know, okay. and all of the information. More than the dog. Well, there was a skeleton group where it was like a few years ago. And it's it's kind of perfect. We should do that, yeah. All right. We, we generally are supportive of yeah, the idea. I, and I think, I, do I hear any objections to this group continuing their work? Work and bringing as a proposal to the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, gonna... If it's a full proposal, but um, if you're suggesting we vote on it on the next meeting, there's a lot of information that I want to say. Yeah, we can. Sure. Yeah. Are we talking one or two places here? Are we talking the Bainbridge or are we talking the other place? I mean, how are we going to come to that conclusion? Well, I, I, we can get you more detail. If the board has, says yes, we'll consider this. I will get you some more pictures so you can see them. I'll, I'll get the exact number of parking. I, I mean, the next step will be taken. We've already spent several hours pulling information, but that was all we needed at this point yeah. to just see if the interest was there. Yeah. We have community interest, and now I have to see if the board has interest. There's another thing. In the past, um, you know, this has been brought before Parks and Recs. I don't know whether or not you've addressed that committee or not. Um, but it wasn't looked on. As an activity of parks and recreation? Well, it's a part. We have a parks and uh, uh, recreation we committee that, no, not maintenance. I'm talking no, about. No, I was thinking of maintaining the park. It's the advisory, advisory committee. committee you're it's it's to an it. advisory committee, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And, it's, and so uh, it, would be, it would be the logical place to start a recommendation from them, oh, for on. example. Would. Uh, well, I mean, that's why we have that committee, Pete, so you're kind of shaking your head. I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> what did I say? You move, you move. I move. Don't move. Don't move. Don't you, move you, you just deserved it. Say stuff. Okay. Yes, sir. No, okay. I mean, I'm just, you know, Jeez, that I'm is something I, 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 I know. We'll yeah. Yeah. Push and, push I don't know when they meet next. But. My one concern first, with Bainbridge first, first is, is I, and I think this has to be answered, is, is parking sufficient? Otherwise, I don't, I don't think it's a viable location. Okay, if if the parking is sufficient, it may be the most viable. But I don't know if you know. We have to have a figure out what's the max going to be at any one given time. Okay. All right. So Bob, please go off and uh, continue your work. Don't. I mean, I mean.
the motion required. I mean, but the sense of the board is that we're very supportive of this and want to encourage looking yeah. into it further and looking um, into it for like, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. Moving on. I'll leave the <laughs> All right, gentlemen, and this was before the lights came out, I was going to talk about, but we were rolling pretty quick. Um, I did have a request from Golf uh, on a, um, it's a budgeted request, but it's budgeted for uh, starting in May. And the, the request is to, we have an air fire that was put in the budget uh, for the next golf course. Budget. And next year's budget year. starting May 1st, okay? And it was approved. Uh, I've been asked that if at all possible, if they could get the airifier now, because the, the conditions when they want to airify, uh, we're replacing an airifier that doesn't meet the requirements or doesn't do as good a job as the ones we've had in the past that are, and, and there's one in disrepair that was scheduled to be replaced anyway. Uh, and by getting it now, they can take advantage of getting it airified before the full swing of the season. If we wait till after May, we're in the booking, we're in the season. So it makes sense to me. Uh, they did get three prices. Um, I do have, if you want to see the spec sheets, I have them. But the request for this particular Toro Pro Core 648 uh, is 21583 It is a budgeted replacement item, and I'd like your permission to allow them to do it two months ahead of time, uh, get it in so they can start the air, air fine project now when the conditions are more ideal and fewer golfers are on the course. It's already approved in the budget? For, for next for, year. For next May. year. Uh, what event. you're asking is to accelerate it into yeah. this year what's no different than we did for the tennis. Exactly. How much yeah. money? 21,000. No, no, how much money was in the budget? Tw um, Where's Art? Where's Art when I need him? Was it was it more than twenty one? Just you don't know. I think no. I think it was twenty five, John. But don't okay. quote me. I just got all the quotes this, uh, late last night, early this morning. I got one more just so we had them. It's between twenty and twenty five. I know it was in the budget. I don't know the exact. So number. it's not far off of what we're. Oh no, it's real close. It's real close. To to I move that we approve it. I second it. Discussion. Love to call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. That's, I'm not now that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Stop yes, me if I'm wrong. Okay. Yes, sir. Didn't the didn't Casper uh, um, suggest or somehow indicate that there were some equipment over there that they would not need in some way and could could get away get rid of? Or? We're going through that process now. Yes, sir. I thought I heard that somewhere. Yes. That's a good deal. There's some equipment they, they, they won't necessarily need, and we're looking at, at ways to dispose of that, either auction, sell it, or can Public Works use it, and, you know, instead of buying stuff at Public Works. So come, come, come. reallocating our resources is something we're looking at. Okay. We have a CPI violation here. Yeah, that's interesting. What we're asking on this is to just send a letter to the insurance company and the and contact the member, right? Well, From our lawyer. Yes. That's it's absurd. a no-brainer. It's absurd. It's been this long. I know. It's a no-brainer. I move that we approve. Whatever we need to do. Second. You out second. You made the motion. I made the motion to approve. Second. It's been on the plate for a long time. It's been on the plate. It's been around, yeah. yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Both. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, that was a, that was a pretty easy one there. Mm. House burn. That's house been around a long time. time. Um, it's been a okay. Good okay. So, as I said earlier, we Almost can't here. act on the MAC um, addition because the paperwork wasn't done. Yeah. And we move on to public comment. What about the IRS update? Uh, no, no. no, no, Terry E. Tom is going to let you come. All right, I had it because we removed it. Okay, here's the IRS. Uh, number one, we are continuing the appeal. Uh, so there were some people asking me and others, that, had we stopped doing that? No, we are. We, the appeal continues. Uh, the board is working with our legal team on an ongoing basis, uh, reviewing documents that are going into the courts. Uh, the courts have a system now um, in their jurisdiction of the, um, that are requiring um, us to meet with the other side. It is not your typical mediation where they have any authority to impose a mediation, but we are going through a step that is required by the courts as a part of our appeal to go through that. 
Uh, we are having ongoing sessions. We are going to have a session at the end of this meeting, which, which we will be talking more about language that is going to the courts. Uh, uh, so it continues on, and uh, that's the update of where we are. So, because I think there were some people out there who thought maybe we had uh, backed off on, on doing the appeal, which we have not done. The appeal continues, and we're working uh, continuously with our legal teams at this point to continue that work. Okay, that's the update that I can yes, sir. do without showing our hand to the other side, frankly. Yeah. Um, okay, public comment. I, I want to yeah. say something. Okay, uh, Bob, uh, um, you mentioned name, name you, you're on the Dutch Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> One identification. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not. You said you had uh, in the last three months around three thousand people uh, in the swimming pool. Yes, sir. Average. So it's come to the average of twenty-nine hundred people. How many percent from that twenty-nine hundred people is from Ocean Pine? I, I gotta tell you, Dutch, I, I don't necessarily yeah. have that information. Well, the reason I want to bring that up, you know, I brought that once before. A lot of the old, I don't suppose to say older ladies, senior ladies, they, they had approached me some time back. You know, they come maybe once or twice a week to swim, do a little bit of exercise. But then when they bring the grandchild, they have to pay. I brought that once before. Why did we don't leave these grandmothers, oh, they're living here, and the grandchild come up to 15 years of elementary school, they let them free in. See, if the, the, the grandmother quit the swimming pool, once he's mad, she has to pay that six, seven dollars. Now, we have to throw a dollar, you know, they say you have to throw a dollar out to make a dollar. So if we can do that, then when the kids are 15, 16 years old, and they come to Ocean Pine, they will go in the pool. You know, the same thing with the golfing and the tennis club. Uh, it is not right, you know, the grandfather, each one of us like to bring our grandchildren to the tennis schools or something. I, I, I bought the ones before, but I want you to look into that. The second, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I, I, don't know. I want to ask you, uh, you have not cleaned the dishes in my street. You got something against me? No. Yeah, you show it every meeting, Dutch. I can't. Uh, okay, I want no, to keep my <laughs> Where? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 and the people was just mentioned about the propane gas, okay? I bought two ceramic heaters. And I got my gas bill down $300 a month. But I pay maybe 25% more on the electric bill. But my gas bill went from $500 to the average of $200 a week. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just mentioning that. I like to see natural gas coming in too. But there's a, a, a couple of things I want, I want to tell you. I hope I don't say anything more. Yeah. Okay, thank you. If, if, if I may, sure. on the swimming, I do believe in the summertime, Dutch, now at the pools, if you're bringing a child and you're not swimming, you do not have to pay to sit there and watch your child swim. So they're only charging for one, whether it's your grandparents well, or not. Well, you know, it, it, it's like I say, uh, you know, we're older people. What, what is well, we got the young and people? And we need for the young people. Yeah, and, and that's why we did it, was yeah. to well, reduce the You know, the let them get in until they come out of yeah. elementary school, you know. And, and that's all I suggest. Thank you. Thank you. One of the reasons I'm here this morning is to review the uh, bulkhead maintenance contract. When I bought my property uh, 16 years ago on the canal, I realized that the, there would be extra expenses in connection with the dock that I have, a very small dock. Mm -hmm. What I did not fully realize is that when they came in for the maintenance, uh, the, the rehab of the thing, it would cost me close to $1,000 to have that dock restored after the people tore, the fisher tore it apart. They're allowed to do that. You know, pulled up the filings and take the dock so they can expand the whole kit. I, I mention that only as a matter of information to you. Uh, perhaps you've never gotten a complaint, but uh, it was a little jolt to me to realize I was going to have to shell out close to $1,000 to get the dock back in if they got the very good job, incidentally, on the bulkhead. Can make some money on that. Mr. Fisher's been, he's a great guy to work with, too. Good. Clean Fisher. Good.